Hey, what's crack like everybody? Um, hope everybody's doing awesome, as per usual. Um, today's guest is Scott Clowder. Clowder, Clowder, Champ Clowder. I uh, forgot to ask how you pronounce his name, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Um, Scott is currently the sales director at Bandai uh, Namco. Um, what used to be, Blue, well, what is Bluefins, but then, you know, got acquired by uh, Bandai. So he deals with SH Figuarts, um, Gundam model kits, freaking, it's just, just Bandai in general. Just toys. It's delicious. And um, he used to work for Green Giant. He also did um, about 10 years in Satchel Collectibles as a product, product, project manager, product manager can't remember right now but one of those two so he used to be involved in essentially projects from beginning to end so and we had a awesome chat which went for about two hours uh, pretty freaking insane <laughs> we talked about condoms we talked about um his work in bandai um, we talked about warhammer because he's painting warhammer stuff and of course life in general and um yeah it was pretty awesome so uh i hope you guys enjoy it and if you do and you're watching this on youtube uh please uh let me know you know give it a like subscribe comment you know just whatever you want to do and if you're listening to this on uh podcast somewhere yeah follow the podcast i think um anyway i appreciate you guys watching listening um Hope everybody, again, is doing fantastic. Or as fantastic you could be doing, doing this uncertain times. <laughs> All right, let's not get too crazy. Anyways, guys, without further ado, Scott Clada. Clouder. Oh, there it is. There we go. What's going on, man? You hear me now? How's it going, man? Everything's good, brother. Listen, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much yeah, for uh, no, thanks for it's good. It's good to see you. Uh, dude, it's been a while, ain't it? Yeah, it's been, uh, last time we saw each other, I was at Gentle Giant. I was still over at, uh, it was at Comic-Con. Remember you came off Comic-Con? Yeah, yeah. And we went to that like, amazing party. Yeah, <laughs> the that, guys was like, that was like three years ago. Damn, dude, time flies. Time flies. And that wow. video you, you pointed out, that's it, it's in my damn channel. <laughs> <laughs> From 11 years ago. Oh, my that's God. That's crazy, right? It is amazing. So, how you been, man? Good, good. Busy. Uh, busy. Crazy yeah, busy. That's good. That's freaking awesome. I've you? seen... Uh, I'm doing good, by the way. I'm, Are we recording know. right now? Yeah, yeah. I, actually, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we're recording. Okay, yeah, we're, okay. We're good. <laughs> so to make sure that I start picking my nose or something like that. <laughs> Don't I'm worry. Talk, we'll, we'll edit it out. I want to start talking shit about you. <laughs> like, I remember, that, remember that time we were at that party and got so drunk you went swimming in a fountain? Oh, I got I, I got memories. <laughs> I got memories. I got I got stories. But, I like um, shirt. Oh, thank you, man. I made it myself. Thank you very much. Nice. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Made it a um, while ago. Fine. You got them runners, huh? My dress it... bag. <laughs> it's one of the reasons. One of the reasons I, I want to talk to you, bro, because, um, you know, you, you, you love putting model kits together. You love Gundam. Oh, dude, man, it's it, it's kind of cool to, you know, to be able to, to make that part of the profession. You know what I mean? Because you remember me when I was back at Sideshow. I, I, that was great and everything, but it was like, um, you know, it was statues and it was figures. And I'm mm -hmm. into all that stuff too. But I mean, my first, obviously, my very first was Star Wars. Um, you know, back in the 70s when I saw Star Wars at a drive in theater, sitting on the roof of my dad's Grand Torino. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. Um, but I remember there was this place called the Five and Ten. You know, it was like a five and dime. It was in the town I lived in outside of Philadelphia. And they used to have the like the Horizon model kits. Mm -hmm. And they had like the, uh, you know, the Star Trek phasers and things like that. And yeah, I yeah. always, you know, we were pretty much poor when I was growing up. But um, so we didn't have like a bunch of disposable income. So I never got to actually buy any of that stuff. We had the Matchbox cars and a little cardboard box. You know, it was like a buck <laughs> or something like that. My G.I. Joe's, I got at the supermarket, you know, when G.I. Joe came out in 82, 83. And then got those at the grocery store. Um but I was always into that. My dad was a model kit guy and he would buy the, the military model kits and he would build them and he'd hang them on strings from like on fishing wire from our ceilings, from our roofs inside our, our room, me and my brother. So I always got a kick out of it. And then um, when I was in 
the Marines, uh, I was in the Marines from 90 to 94 and I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan. And there's the Marine Corps base, which was a Futima air station. And you could take a bus over to the air force base, which is called Kadena air station. So it's like, well, I forget how long it was like an hour or something, not maybe not an hour, but I, I took the bus over there and I just left the base and I was wandering around and I came across this model kit store. I was like, Oh, cool. And I went in and that's why I found Gundam the first time. And that was 91. You know, Straight and, from and, Japan. And, and, yeah. I bought like three or four kits, dude. I bought this. I, I saw this kit. I didn't buy it. I saw this kit. It was uh, remember the cane robot from RoboCop two. Yeah, of course. There's a kit out there that's like a, a old school kit and it's got metal die cast, you know, hand cast parts in it. And it's a cane robot kit. And I was telling uh, Anthony Mestez, who, who's been in the industry for like 30 some years now, but he's painter extraordinaire, project manager, product manager. He's painted stuff in movies like that you've seen for a second. That It's like, that's Anthony painted that <laughs> kind of <laughs> stuff. And I was like, dude, I remember seeing this cane robot. He was like, what? And apparently that's like a grail item. Oh <laughs> if I bought God. that back then, I probably would have been able to sell it for a car at this point. <laughs> but I, I didn't know back then. I was like 19 years old. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yep, yep. And that's one of those robots that really doesn't have that much out there, unfortunately. You know, that yeah, yeah. Robot. There's not Just... a, there's not, I don't know why either. There's not I, a whole I, lot of it. I know Hot Toys teased a, one of them ages ago, and he never came through. So Oh, really? Because I know yeah. they did the big Ed, the Ed 209. Of and course, they did a they bunch did, of different they did a few yeah jetpack and all that other stuff yeah but they had teased the cane i don't know what happened but if they can't make it happen shit dude who's gonna make it happen you know <laughs> right right yeah yeah Good Lord. if they can't do it then nobody's gonna do it but that's but yeah that's i don't know maybe it's a maybe it's a licensing thing or something i don't know that's like, well, you know what you know, that could be you know, the people people complain that um you know the indiana not the indiana jones line the well the the highlander line that was done the 12 inch line that was done years and years ago there was no uh ramirez and it's because sean connery didn't give he up didn't his license like, for oh, that. Right. so you can do it you just weren't allowed to do it which was a shame because obviously everybody wanted <laughs> ramirez you know yeah especially now crazy. you know r.i.p yeah. mr yeah it's sir a... sean connery is he 90 i think so yeah 90 years old so he, isn't it he's crazy gone. that isn't it crazy that when I think when Harrison Ford did Crystal Skull, he was the same age that Sean Connery was when he did Last Crusade. Really? I think that's yeah. I think that that's how it jives up actually. Harrison Ford was the same age that Connery wow. was. Wow. Uh, but some of my friends just realized that uh, <laughs> Temple of Doom, Temple, Temple of Doom is actually a prequel to Raiders. Some of my friends actually just realized that. Did you know Tem that? I'm. I have no clue. So right now you're yeah, just Temple, apparently Temple of Doom. I think takes place in 1937, and then Raiders takes place in 1939, and then Last Crusade. I think is right before World War II or something like that. But no, dude, I had no clue. Learn something every day. <laughs> it's 2020. I'm learning about this right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And Star Wars wasn't really about Star Wars. <laughs> no, it was about it was like FedEx and UPS fighting each other, and then just yeah, robots and all no, this right. other shit. <laughs> and what the hell is a Han Solo anyway? What's that supposed to be? <laughs> and he was a uh, what, what? What did Han Solo do? Was he like a merchant or something? He was a he was a smuggler. A smug, a smug, a look at me, a merchant. Good lord, yeah. a smuggler. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he was a merchant. He was merchandising places oh. and everything. That's hilarious. But that's not really your jam, though. Your jam is more of a more of Marvel stuff, and you do a lot of anime stuff too, right? Bro, I look. What do you mean, my Gundam is my? my you can't yeah. see it right now. Yeah. I have a, I have um, I, that's the Sasabi over oh, there, and he and he's fighting. This is course. this is how old I am. <laughs> let me hold on. Let me move the light real quick. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a Goku right there. I don't oh, know. Nice. You, can, you can see the. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Uh, Muto Ray's Gundam there. But, nice. Um, yeah, and nice. I have all, all, all those shelves up there. I don't know if you can see that. Go yeah, yeah, costume. I can see uh, yeah. Rick Dunn. Oh, very yeah. cool. Oh, dude. I'm a bitch for Gundam. Yeah, I, I got the. Um, well, I've got the. This is the real grade. You, I haven't done a real grade yet. Oh, I need to. I just ah. finished this. This is actually, I just literally just finished it. I started painting the head on it, but that's the crossbone Gundam. Oh, crossbones, dude. Oh, and he's like, a, he's like, it, it's from a, 
it's from an uh, from a manga. Mm -hmm. So he's never actually been in any series, but he's like a pirate basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. He they're in the uh, in that F ninety one you know timeline, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like um, it's in one of the games too. I think there's like yeah, this really cool cutscene that you can find it online. It's like a GIF. Yeah. But it's like you you see Crossbone and he turns around and he pulls off his cape and then the these things the Crossbones uh, pop up the X. So yeah, this nah, is the um, that's sick. This is the core fighter that goes into his chest, but it pops open and then he just takes off into the air and i was like what is that is that an actual serious turn i was like a cutscene from a video game <laughs> or something like that. um this is the sazabi that i just finished um this is a real great sazabi damn that's huge bro i thought it was a master grade for a second there it's big yeah it's really big and i, I got these um God metal damn. edge parts you see the rifle there yeah yeah i see it so I got these metal edge parts and dropped those in. And then, like, you can see, um, let me turn them around. You can see on the back there, like, all these all these details in here. That's all yeah. metal edge parts. These are all metal edge parts up in here. It was a blast. I mean, it's, this thing took me, like, a year to build because I was going back and forth and work a little mm -hmm. bit at a time. And I've never done metal edge parts before. And sometimes they're super thin, like you can see on um, in here. Yeah. There, there was a couple other fins in there, but the the... The connection point was so thin that when I went to move it, it broke off. I was just like, no! <laughs> Don't you hate that when that happens? Right? Because then you're like, I, I get angry and I'll put it away. <laughs> like, I literally, I get angry, I just put it away. And a few like, months later, you come back for to like it. For like six months, yeah. Yeah, I've got a bunch <laughs> of them I got. I got stuff down here, I got stuff up there. That's like half built and I got angry because a piece broke. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to replace it. It's fu actually funny, the, the way I met the guys that... Uh, at Bluefin where I work now. Um, I think it's up there in the back. Is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Now I'm going to knock everything off my shelf. Live that, no, I, I just love this clutter ass that we're getting yeah, you gotta, right now. There's oh nothing there, man. There's nothing there. It's concaved. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ooh, a Ooh, Strike void. Freedom? Is that Strike Freedom? So that's, yeah, that's the RG Strike Freedom. Damn, dude. These RGs are see, delicious. Well, and I went through and I painted this one up a little bit. I just did like some shading and stuff like that. But that that gold stuff inside there, that's all plated. Oof. So it's bright and it's really nice. So you see the inside here, inside the, um, the hollow of his elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, it was like, like a yellowish injected material. Uh... So when I when I saw that, I was like, oh, I gotta make that gold. So I got some <laughs> test. I got some testers gold. And testers in for everyone out there in TV land, uh, testers is an enamel, so it takes harsher chemicals to actually thin it out and make it smooth. Acrylic is water based, so acrylic is easier to work with. Um, so those chemicals inside the enamel, once I dry brushed it onto plastic, it literally started eating the plastic. Oh, so it dries shit. the plastic out, and then I went to move the arm, and that's why the arm's and, all floppy because oh. it just broke <laughs> and it crumbled. Um, so I looked on the box. And it just so happens to be on a box that said, you know, if you need parts, replacement parts, if you have a broken part, contact our customer service. And I I actually met the dude that did that at a convention. I, I was like, hey, can I get part? And he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And that was like seven, eight years ago. And then um, over the course of the years, I've been building. I started building again. I stopped building for a long time, but I guess it was almost 10 years ago at Comic-Con. I actually picked up a Master Grade Exia that's Ooh. back up there somewhere. But um, And I had such a good time. But dude, part of the reason I lose parts and I break parts is because I used to sit in and drink. While <laughs> so you know, you get a couple in and you're just like, you know, now now I wear these. Like uh, when I started building again, I didn't have to wear these. Like my eye, you know, after a while, because mm -hmm. I had laser eye surgery. But after a while, you're you know the muscles in your eyes deteriorate because you're getting old and all that. But I gotcha. remember one day I was working on a on a a real grade um, RX grandpa. The RX seven eighty two, the original. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I I couldn't figure out the the uh, getting the stickers on his eyes. Because again, <laughs> look at the size of the head. Like, yeah, very tiny. You know, literally the if, you, if, for, if for, again for anyone that doesn't know when you when you get to the um the sticker part um where's my box at? Oh, here it is. That's your sticker sheet. It's so small. <laughs> right. They're microscopic. And, and of course, I can't see right now, but right here, the green ones. Oh my those god! Those are the eyes. 
and, so and the, what we see in the big line is that we're not seeing the actual it you know the cut part though part that comes no no off. absolutely you're right i don't know how well this camera's going to do on it but yeah so yep. you're seeing a bleed a bleeding color over the edge of it there but, you go and and there's there's like the solid one with the black rim and then there's just the individual eyes themselves so you could do it either way you want to and i remember this is we were at our old house and i'm i'm, I'm doing this trying to trying to figure it out and my wife was like can you see that all right i'm like no i can't that's why that's why i got these right here i'm like mm, just grab yeah. it, you fit it, put yeah. it in there. <laughs> so i was like i need glasses this is crazy i was like 40 like 40 at the time 41 something like that Ooh, how long ago was that uh i'll be 49 on the 20th so Ooh. so it was like eight, eight years ago Getting up there, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting up there. I'll be 50 next year. It's crazy. We all are. Jesus Christ. It's crazy. Time but flies, you know what? bro. I don't look like it. I look like I'm in my 20s, right? P2? Right? Yeah, of course. Aren't in the camera right now, you look. Yeah, of course. You look good, man. You look good. Don't worry about yeah. it. I got a, I got a de aging software here that uh, you know, on on oh, good. Premiere. Like the shit they use in the Marvel movies. <laughs> like, oh man, right. you're gonna look fucking right. great. <laughs> yeah, they hooked up Michael Douglas, so they gotta hook up me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, awesome, man, I got dude. um. I just started painting, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'm trying to do the things that intimidate me the most when it comes to model building. M miniature painting? Well, I did, there was, um, the first thing that intimidated me the most was water slide decals. Oh, that, it's, it, yes it is, yes tough. it is, I agree. Yeah. It's tough, if you don't, if you don't use the right, I got the, I was using water and they would sit too long and then they would tear and then I started using this stuff, it's the uh, Mark Set, mm -hmm. Mark Soft, you know, so one, one, one gets it off the sheet and the other one makes it kind of adhere to the surface made it look painted on or whatever yeah i see i see so, when i see uh, guys on youtube like they, they they make it look so easy they're like sliding yeah. it positioning yeah. where they want and all yeah. this shit and i'm like oh my god yeah. can i do that and right. i just right. fuck that right. shit up <laughs> right right yeah try it try it for the first time while you got like five beers in you <laughs> oh lordy i wouldn't oh my god it's like <laughs> fuck <laughs> but yeah it's um that was a, a one of the most were the first intimidating things for me, but the your the, the YouTube videos that you're talking about that's that's like a, a treasure trove of mm -hmm. information. I mean, I seen guys that were like, yeah, here I here's how I painted a model kit using three markers. And really, <laughs> you know, freaking yeah. amazing. <clears throat> and they they do it as a guy in South Korea um, that that has a thing bunker bunker plot I think it is, but mm. yeah, it's just like he's like for the for the thrifty gundam builder i guess you know whatever it is but it's all in korean or anything but he's got some subtitles in there but you can see what he's doing it's exactly. like exactly wow, i'm overthinking this completely i'm like no i need to get an airbrush and i even no, you don't you don't need an airbrush you don't need any of that jazzy shit three markers just, and some right right like water and now i got now i've got now i got crazy stuff i've got all these citadel paints oh yeah i got like a whole drove for him here but um but i started I started messing around and I've got some old transformers so I would just paint those oh, oh yeah. to try and get weathering and stuff like that and then I started realizing like my weathering's out of scale because it might look cool but in scale but it, yeah. That was like, it, yeah it would basically look like it's missing giant chunks of, of paint um so playing that down but then the war or the uh, Warhammer. Warhammer stuff it just kind of happened man it was weird it was um about a year ago I was when just, you just like, walked into a store and you're like, "Hey, shit, Warhammer, I, let me just grab it." I um, I think it was, yeah, I think it was pretty much that. I was at like a game store. <laughs> I think I went to get paint. I think that's what it was. I went to get paint. I was like, "Fuck it, I might as well get a figure while I'm here." And I grabbed. They had like they do like a magazine with one figure inside it, so I bought it. And I bought okay, it and I painted. And um, yeah. So after that, I just kept going. And um, do you even play these, the uh, game? No, I have no idea how to play the game. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, so you got the you know the Space Marines. Yes, but then this is the newer thing, uh, the Age of Sigmar. It's basically like the fantasy version of it. So instead gotcha. of you know the big rifle wielding Space Marines, you got these like kind of the same look, the very bulky and armored up, but um, it's more fantasy stuff. It's more like dragons and sorcery and magic and that kind of shit. So gotcha, gotcha. Not not space. Do you painted those two? Yeah, I painted these. Dang. This is um, they got like ghosts and stuff. There's the one, the one series that's called uh, the Night Haunts. 
in mm-hmm. one army. So they're all like ghosts and skeletons and shit like that. I've been kind of stuck on those because it's a lot of fun. Uh, but the, doing the model building aspect of it has been a trip because it's so tiny. This is the biggest one that I have here. I don't know this dude's name, but he's pretty cool. Wow. The paint looks amazing, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, I, I, I mean, it looks legit. It's a, and then I, I even put some of the grass and stuff on the base. And... Oh, look at you <laughs> getting Martha Stewart on me, man. All right. oh. <laughs> Martha Stewart. <laughs> But yeah, there's, there's, you know, on those things, it's the same too. You have those lines, you know, the mold line. Um, so any, anytime you see a piece of plastic with a fine line running down it, that's the place where the, the metal tooling separate it after it injected the metal and or it injected the plastic into it. Um, so you got to scrape that off or else when you paint it, you're going to see that line. down. Mm-hmm. There. You don't want that. And some things, some things are even worse. Um, where's my Mandalorian at? Where do you see this? I got the Mandalorian from, uh, you know, the Hasbro. Okay. Can I can I say their name? Is that... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, che- I'm checking with my producers. Hold up. Those guys. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> um, and and props out to you know I I don't know if I'm allowed to plug anybody, but uh, Big Bad Toy Store. I actually got this from Big Bad Toy Store, which is fantastic online shop. But um, that's what's up. Hell yeah, bro! I, I, I got this and. Um, I don't know if you can get my glasses back on again. See that bullshit on his cheek? Yeah, I see it. Oh, that that's right. I saw you dent. complaining about it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then the, head, the helmet's all warped. And then yep, yep. the backpack The backpack looks like they carved it out of a piece of soap. Yep. I was just like, man, this sucks. Disappointed. I Disappointed. Like, I, was, I, I was like, hey, um, I just got this from you guys. And I don't know what to do with it. I mean, the model builder head in me says... Let's figure out how to fix it. We could putty that and we can, but it's PVC and it's harder. Mm-hmm. It's not as, so I was just like, you know, I've never really complained about stuff before because I just fix it on my own, but oh, now that I broke all my shit. Um, <laughs> but they were like, keep it. We'll send you another one. If the if the one you get looks as bad as this one, we might ask for them both back. So then we can go back to manufacturing and let them know that this is a problem, but um, don't ship it back to us. No, and just keep it. So I was just like, wow, that was quick. <laughs> they were okay. really cool about it. So. They just take care of it, um, that's but yeah, that's the. I think I think that's the downside to it. The model, le- trying to learn as much as I can about model building and all that. Um, my kids, my kids bring in toys all the time. Mm-hmm. This is uh, from the series Octonauts, which you guys should check out because it's fantastic oceanography type thing for kids, and I love these. Oh yeah. Um, but this broke, the and his legs fell off, and of course they brought it in here and said, "Daddy, can you fix this for me?" Sure, let me go put it in here next to uh, Wonder Woman, whose leg is missing. <laughs> and uh, so I got like this pile of, of toys that I got to fix now for my kids. I got I got Maximus uh, Master Chief. Oh, and he there you broke, go. He broke yep. one of the legs, so I have the leg over Seven here. Yep. You know, I, I'm getting so ready to like, fix it. Yep. You got to drill it out and... You know. And you know, stuff. you know, this this stuff isn't made for that. The second it no. breaks, it's done, so... <laughs> I gotta figure out the one time I've got you, you know the masking tape. Um, I don't know where it's at, but it's like that thin yellow tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you use to like mask out painting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I had something in here that I'd masked off, and I was gonna paint it. And the kids, my daughters, saw that. My daughters are uh, four and, and eight. My my four year old, she's about to turn five. Um, but they saw that and they got a hold of the tape and the next thing you know, like all their toys had were all taped up. <laughs> hey, we're trying to paint them like that is and Yes. I'm like, where's my stuff at? That is like, what? awesome. That but is they, awesome. they build too. They build too. This is um Yeah, I wanna get Max to build too. Oh, oh that's dope, yeah. Yeah, you know, they built that and then uh this is the one they built and painted. There's another bear guy. Or petite that's... guy. That's um, so cool. There is a bear guy that my one daughter built, but yeah, I mean, they gave it a shot. They had a good time with it. You know, they put a decent effort into it, and they were just like, "Oh, that's cool." That's pretty dope that you got in building so, and painting. So yeah, that was that was cool. Now they're into Legos, so because there's no, you don't have to cut them off the sprues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Open the bag. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, it it gets expensive when you let your kids use your tools. Yes, it does. I'm trying to figure. I'm I'm kind of trying to figure that one out too. I don't know what tools you use, but I bought those. Um, I mm. bought those. Did you ever hear those God Hand? No. There's these cutters. They're nippers. I've got these nippers now. It's nothing crazy. Okay. But they're 
they're sharp. They got a nice point to them, and they work pretty well. But there are these nippers that are called God Hand cutters. Got this crap yeah. still. I need to get those. Well, I mean, and I got a, um, I got similar. Oh, okay. But the cool thing, and and again, so so you guys know out there when. If, if anybody's actually watching this for the model building aspects of it and not just <laughs> because they love pizza. Um, so this is just a, a, a runner with a piece from a stand on it. Mm -hmm. But when you're, when you're, if you're using a crappy pair of cutters like this, the idea is to cut as far away from the part as you can, because if you cut up close to the part and this isn't sharp, sharp enough, that stress on the plastic is going to break it away. It's not going to cut it away. It's going to break it yeah. away. You're going to have a little white white spot from the strain and everything on there. So you cut it as far away from it, and then um, and then you can get like a um, like nail file or something like that. Like if you don't if you don't have like regular files, like I got. Hmm. I never thought of files. I have a a, a sanding block with um. Uh, I got I shit like this and like thousand or whatever it is. So it, I can just ones. go. Yeah, they do ones like this that's like multi, so yeah. you got a, a heavier and then a lighter and then a fine. But the problem is you get too crazy with these and you can start seeing the, the warping in the plastic because you're like, because yeah, if you yeah. go back and forth, if you go back and forth on it, you're rounding it out. So with Gundam stuff, for the most part, like if I cut this sprue off here, like I just did it, like I was saying, I, I cut it, I'm going to cheat, just use my sharp cutters. But, um, <laughs> and I got one of these uh, metal files too. So I just cut this down. Let me show it over here. I cut that down. Uh huh. Okay. You see that? Yeah. And then when you're doing it, you just do it in one direction. Okay. And then you get it down smooth to the point where, um, you know, it you should blend in, right? It should disappear. Right. Yeah, yeah, blend it. And then you know, and then if you use one of these things, you can make it look even nicer. But usually the plastic is is so well done and injected and everything that you don't have to worry like about painting over it. And if you do. You know, you get one of those Gundam markers and you just clean it up a little bit. Yeah. You've seen the Gundam markers, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have some. I have some. Of course. Of course. Come on, man. I tried to, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I got all kinds. I got I got the Gundam markers that I never use anymore, but then I got all these different Citadel paints. I got the Vallejo metallics. That's what I use that, now. Um, I forgot what kind of paint I have them actually down here, but like I, I haven't used Gundam markers in a while. Yeah, I, I, I used them for a while and then I... um. I bought the air can. Did you ever see that? Mr. No. Hobby does a does a can. It's like a, a compressed air can, and it has like this weird looking airbrush on it. And you just put the marker inside there, oh. and you could base coat stuff. Interesting. Um, it's kind of cool if you don't want to buy an airbrush. I mean, you can use rattle cans to get base down. You know, mm -hmm. I, I haven't I haven't totally painted anything from top to bottom except for those little miniatures. But I did get air um. Airbrushes intimidate the shit out of me, dude. You can get one on Amazon cheap for like like two hundred and some bucks for the compressor and three airbrushes. Like it literally has three three different types of airbrushes. And it cost me like two hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. Which Anthony Mess does if you watch this is be like of cheap course. motherfucker. Cheap ass <laughs> motherfucker. The the airbrush he was showing me cost like twice as much as that entire kit. Like <laughs> you know. I got this I got this compressor, <laughs> I got three airbrushes. And the one that he the one that he showed me was like just the airbrush itself like seven hundred dollars. I'm like, dude, have you seen my shit? Like I'm not I'm not trying to prank prototypes for like major companies. True. Like, this is I'll a hobby. My own little shit. It's a hobby, not an investment. That's freaking funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's man, awesome. Uh, dude, so how cool, can but... you tell me I was gonna ask you because again, you're you're you love Gundam and all this stuff, and then you work for essentially the company that builds this stuff and sells it, correct? Yeah. yeah. How, how how is yeah. that? Is that like yeah, I fucking made it, baby? Or <laughs> like <laughs> like everybody everybody that that I knew before this when I started to go to work for for Bandai for Bluefin, they were like, oh yeah, well of course you do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but when I went to work for uh, you know this toy company in Philadelphia or, or toy store. I worked for in Philadelphia back in like 1999 it was my first toy gig, but it was a retail store, you know, it was mm -hmm. a mom and pop shop. But I would tell people, oh, yeah, I work at a toy store. And they're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like everybody went to high school <laughs> with me. You know? yeah. But now I tell, we're not now, but years ago um, when I met my wife, the, you know, the in-laws, I'd be like, yeah, I'm in the toy industry. And they'd be like, huh, what? <laughs> so you make like dolls and babies? No, 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 the toy industry. Like the, we do collectibles. We do 
oh really it's for for like for what <laughs> like for star wars oh okay boy well, yeah we make like two three four five hundred dollar collectibles and they're like wait a second who buys that stuff like there was people that just they, they didn't get it and this is like back in the early 2000s early Dude, but early 2000s like, i mean two, <laughs> You, I mean, you remember the Lord of the Rings stuff? Yeah, yeah. When you could you could write Lord of the Rings on a piece of paper and put it on eBay for a buck, you know, <laughs> dude. But like... it, it was it was crazy like that. Um, but yeah, to get back to your your question, I think it was, um, you know, um, being at Comic Con and and kind of refining something that I really enjoyed and going over to that booth all the time and eventually some of those guys were like hey you're back again oh you work over that that place and oh, that's pretty cool <laughs> and then you know you talk about those things and then it, it's networking man it's like how we met you know Correct. I mean, you used to do stuff on video and all that stuff and then uh you grow that and it really becomes like um you know I don't know if you ever watched Gary Vaynerchuk I'm a oh, I love off, Gary um that personal brand you know what I mean mm-hmm where you just you meet people and you you're cool with people and all that stuff and then um the opportunities come up as they do and i had an opportunity and i mentioned it to uh the ceo over at bluefin and i was like oops shit mm. yeah, knock each other. um i was just like yeah I'm, I'm looking to make a move would you uh would you be a reference on my resume he was like dude just come work for me like <laughs> he's like we're, we, we're moving we're 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 now a bondi company like it's perfect timing well, we need a director of sales and i was like cool man I mean, it just worked out really well for us and it's been fantastic ever since it's not to say that my other jobs weren't fantastic but mm-hmm. you know i I'm, I'm out of experience level now where you know i can talk to like this is this is how injection works. This is how production works. Because I did production before I did you know the yeah. manufacture. I I got to hang out with some of the best sculptors in the industry and best painters in the industry and fabricators. And I got to go yeah you know, I got to meet Stan Winston in person at his studio years ago. You know that's shit awesome. like that. That that once you do that, you're just like wow. You know, and you see uh, <laughs> when I when I talk to people sometimes and they're like, oh, you met um. Like Doug Jones, I see Doug Jones every year at Comic Con, mm-hmm. and and Doug is the sweetest guy. And they're like, "Did you get a picture with him?" I was like, "No, no, I, it's not what I'm in it for." You know what I mean? It's just it's nice people that you meet over the years. Um, mm-hmm. but luckily, I haven't met I haven't met any celebrities that were assholes or anything like that. Um, I hear there might be some out there. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently there's some out there, but uh-huh. but no, it's just it's the same kind of thing. Like you just meet people, you always meet people, and. Mm-hmm. And you have those conversations, and then next you know, opportunity pops up, and they're just like, "Oh, well, why don't you come do that for us?" And then the validation comes from when you go to the next show with them, and all these people are coming over to the booth, and they're like, "Yo, what's up, man?" And you're getting hugs yeah. and all that, and they're like, "Wow, we hired the right person because, you know, if we didn't, those people wouldn't be here right now." Mm-hmm. That's fucking awesome, and, dude. Uh, there's a there's a certain a certain amount or certain ways that goes, you know. At least I think so. I mean, I don't know. There might be a bunch of people out there talking shit about me. As long as you're getting paid, son. I mean, getting some free like, shit. Fuck that dude. Yeah, we <laughs> fired him because he was an asshole. <laughs> I mean, have you, like, has your model kit uh, buying or just grabbing, has has it increased because you work now there? Like, uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the year before I joined the company, uh, I went to Anime Expo. They they gave me a pass because I'd never been to Anime Expo before. And it was cool because there were some people that I knew. Um, uh, Scott Zillner, who runs Power Morphicon, and, and and he he runs a bunch of stuff. He was been in the Toys That Saved Us. He or Toys That Saved Us, Toys That Made Us, Toys That Saved Us, <laughs> Saved Me Too. But uh, <laughs> so Scott and uh, Mike Flomer is a painter or a gentle giant. Uh, he's a Gundam guy. And so I knew they were going to be there. So I was like, I'm going to go check this out. And I was like, wow, man, because you got Comic-Con. And Comic-Con is a big deal. But then if you took Comic-Con and you focused on just one genre, because Comic-Con is like everything, you know? Yeah. I mean? Anime Expo was like, it's all anime and you're just like what the hell is going on here it was nothing but madness anime. yeah and i and i went to the booth and that's where they did the uh the announcement for the gundam movie when they announced oh, that right. legendary yeah legendary was going to work on a gundam which i'm movie. still waiting to see we haven't yeah. heard shit I'm, right I'm, I'm, they I'm had a, brian k brian k vaughn was going to write it and i think he wrote it i don't, I don't know if it finished yet but then we got shut down the fucking virus happened and that was it you know so it's still going to happen it's just going to take longer 
you know, but hey, take your time, guys. Me- take your time. I, yeah, take please take your time because I know if you do it right, it's going to be amazing. If you rush it, um, just just my pants. I'm going to have to come with a diaper so I don't like jeans everywhere. <laughs> like if you do it right, you get pack rim. If you do it wrong, you get pack rim too. <laughs> That's true. Or if you if you do it right, you get dustle dawn. If you oh fuck God. it up, you get dustle dawn two and three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I actually got to meet Majin Kawaguchi at that show really and just so you guys know Majin Kawaguchi is like the uh he's like the Stanley of Gundam <laughs> like he's like the he's like the main dude it like he he builds himself and he built you know he's very humble guy um but yeah it was pretty cool to meet him and then uh, I entered I entered something into the Gundam contest it's the first time I ever entered anything into mm-hmm this was before you were working up at uh, this was yeah this was this was before this is a wing uh an hg wing gundam that i gave a big giant axe to and i re-sculpted his head and i gave him this funky backpack that i scratched or not scratch built but i uh get bashed together and then um so he's got this back thing and then the wings that i kind of did yeah. and i put that in and i i got a pin for it i didn't win anything but still it was kind of cool you know to see people walking over taking a picture of my piece mm-hmm. i was like wow that's pretty cool <laughs> people actually like it they like me they Yo, really like me that damn bandai booth <clears throat> with all those um like every the, the few times i've been to san diego they have that booth and they have like those original creations by just artists and you know great uh yeah. gundam builders and they're just like mind-blowing <laughs> You the know what shit that people is? do? What? The the Gundam Builders World Cup? Well, yeah, yeah. I've never yeah, I've never been what, yeah. to one, of course. I've never seen like but yeah, you just uh, there there's kits there's kits in that Gundam Builders World Cup that um so if you guys ever go to uh Anime Expo or New York Comic Con or <clears> the, uh, San Diego Comic Con, you're gonna see like a section where they got tables out and people can sit down and build and all that. But there's people that enter into the Gundam Builders World Cup and then, then winners are picked. They're like Meiji Kawaguchi is one of the, the guys that actually does the grading to figure out how well you did. Oh, that's um, dope. But, but you, you kind of ramp up, and if you become like the North America champion, you go to Japan. You actually fly to Japan. They take you to Japan, and you actually go and compete against the other countries and the other winners. Of Holy the shit. And then like the top guy gets all kinds of cool stuff and a trophy and props and uh, stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. But there's dudes that spend years on one kit that they put into the Gun and Build a World Cup. Wow. And that's the kind of stuff that you saw at those shows. Like they literally spend years on it. And you can't you can't like scratch build it from nothing. You can't just like carve it out of wax. You mm-hmm. gotta actually use a kit and then do the work on it and the modeling and all that kind of stuff. But it's a trip, man. It's like um it's like the Super Bowl Gundam kits. Yeah, I mean the oh, work oh, is ridiculous. Yeah, I've seen some pretty insane, some pretty dedicated ones. There was uh, one of the coolest ones I ever saw was um, did you did you watch a uh, Gundam Double O? Uh, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, like it's I, have, the one I, with... I know I know the kits, but I don't or the yeah. Gundams. Yeah, that's the, um, of course I got one. You get to see my ass again, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the. Uh, the double O X E O. This Exio, is the right? riser pack. So this this jet kind of transforms just a little bit and it snaps onto his back. But um, this um, again for you people out there that aren't 100% Gundam. Um, you know how you got Star Wars and you got Canon, uh-huh. but then there was there was out of Canon stuff that Dark Horse did back in the day and all that. It, it's somewhat similar to the Gundam line. You've got Moro Ray's line, which is the Universal Universal Century. Century. Yeah, and then everything else is like Iron Blooded Orphans, Double O, like those kind of Yo, things. Yo, Iron Blooded Orphans was fucking awesome. It started <sighs> slow, but goddamn, I loved it. Woo. Dude, nice. that show. It's right. It's like you're you're like ah, oh, it's a giant robot kind of thing, and then you're watching like, fuck, this is children surviving. Like this uh, isn't this isn't even about robots anymore. And that Godfather scene where they smoke that chick through a window. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah. She was standing there holding a teddy bear, and she kind of looks up, and you see a guy pop, 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 shoots her in the face through the window. I was like, I get, I get goosebumps still, dude. What, That's good. What the fuck was that? And yeah, another guy getting shot. I was just like, oh, okay. anyway. So yeah, those um, <laughs> those shows that are outside of the um, the Universal Century, there there's a bunch of those that aren't they don't connect back in. But 
Um, the the double O series that Exia thing goes into Trans Am mode. It's called. And mm -hmm. it, it like it turns like a reddish orange and it moves faster and it's like, but there's a transition it goes through from the blue and white to that reddish orange kind of hot kind of looking paint scheme. And some dude bought like twelve kits, the no, same exact kit. No, and he did it. He took the first one and then he had the final one, which was a clear one like that. And then he went wow. through and like painted them so it transitioned like a grayscale all the way to that. Was just like, fuck, that's some fucking dedication. That's yeah. I was gonna say dude, that is dedication. Right there, yeah. Holy, it was moly. a trip. No. Yeah. So that was the payoff for that long story of me flying that airplane around. We finally landed it at the airport. <laughs> I forgot about that. Shit. Sorry, we, we 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 talked about Iron Blooded Orphans. We got everything inside that one conversation. <laughs> That's how it worked, though. We just I just fly around for a while, God. and then eventually I land the plane. <laughs> just gotta stick with me. People are going. That's it. That was the payoff for that all was, that bullshit that was... about people getting shot in the face and <laughs> little girls getting shot in the face. What the fuck is this podcast? Oh, about? <laughs> go back to that. I want to hear about that. Like, what? How did that happen? Uh, yeah, that Barbados, mm, yeah, I tell everybody, you know, stick Barbados. with it. But that Barbados, Barbados, Barbados whatever. Barbados. Barbados. You, you say Barbados. Barbados. I'm sorry, I gotta I say, say it. Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Barbados. <laughs> did you ever learn? Did you ever try learning Japanese? I I tried. Then I stopped. Then I started learning it Brazilian or I should say Portuguese. Brazilian mm. Portuguese. Você fala português também? But um, but I really want to learn Japanese because I'm tired of reading subtitles already. Like, yeah. dude, it, it takes away from the art, man. Right? It does. It's it does. Tough. So tough. most I, of I, the part, I watch um Gundam in English because I want to see. It. And first of all, yeah. Gundam for those who don't know, like there's so much uh shit going on because there's a lot of politics, especially if you watch yep. the Universal Century side. Yep. So like, if you miss something, then you're like, oh, what the fuck is going on? So you gotta pay attention. So, you know, and you want to see the, the art yeah. and the, the mobile suits and all this shit. So I'm like, you know what? Just put the, at least yeah. the first viewing. I do it in English and then I'll put it in Japanese. But, I, you know, it's did like, you, bro. Did, did you read Unicorn or did you watch Unicorn? <laughs> did I watch Unicorn? <laughs> you know how you know how it gets all psycho framey and everything towards the end of that and all the shit just goes crazy? And like, if you're yeah. reading, it's like you're missing everything. Yeah, you're you're just. It's like a friend of mine went to see Inception, and he said there was some dude that was drunk playing with his phone for the first fifteen minutes. This dude kept making noise, and then he tried to pay attention to the movie, and he was lost. He, was done. Like, he didn't course. know what the fuck was going. Same thing, man. You're just looking down. Okay, wait, wait what the fuck just happened? And you rewind it. <laughs> yep. I do the same thing. Like um, any of those where where the the animation is just completely jaw dropping. I'm like, okay, what happened? And I mm -hmm. go back and read <laughs> read the subtitles again. Some of the or some of the places like Hulu and all that have been doing pretty good with with dubs. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work though. Which one hasn't worked for you? Which one did you see? Ah, eh, fuck this. One Punch Man didn't work for me. Oh, I haven't seen the, that in English. English. I don't the English, think. the English dub. It's you know I always envisioned kind of like Patton Oswalt's voice, but this guy was not really. He was a little, I don't know. It's didn't. Really, Patton but Oswald. the the opposite <laughs> happened too. The opposite happened too because. I watched Cowboy Bebop mm -hmm. in the dub version, and um, then I watched the Japanese version. I was like, "That's not Spike." I know, dude. I agree. I agree because I watched it in on Cartoon Network. So, like to me, ha oh, oh, ha oh, oh, the swordfish. That's another. That's another Bandai model kit, and it, it came with miniatures too. So I actually painted them too. This is how okay. ridiculous I've been lately. I didn't do you... the eyes yet because the eyes are ridiculous. But there's Jet. Oh shit. Damn, but and that looks fucking and good. And there's Spike. Dude, they're so and tiny. And then Faye. Wow. Faye's like super tiny. But yeah. That is, that's dope. I mean, but that's... yeah, that was, a, that, was, that was the reverse. I was just like, oh, that's mm -hmm. not... Because there's that dude that did Spike's voice. I forget his name, but he's done a bunch of stuff. And it sure sounds weird. And, and he was like, okay, that's Spike to me. I was like, yeah, that's Spike. And then I watched the Japanese version. I was like, no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> that's not dude. It. Mm -hmm. A show that I cannot watch in English is Naruto. Like I cannot watch. Naruto I've never, anymore. I've never, I've never watched it. And and apparently Naruto's voice is done by like this lady who's like a in her in her fifties. What? She's oh, just like, a... like fucking Goku with like Grandma. I forget her name too. Like it's this old lady who's been doing his voice since the, forever. The, for the original, for the Japanese since, one. Yeah. For oh the really? Japanese. Dude, it's. I met the guy. I, I met the the guy who does the English uh, dub. He's I've, nice I've, guy, I've seen I, him. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can't, but I can't but, get into in, in, Dragon Ball in English too. Like, no, no. I'm like, bleh, bleh. I need to see this in Japanese. In Japanese, like I come. <laughs> that Japanese, not not come. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get it. Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work. Yeah, it, no, you're you're right. The the um that that kind of the inflections of re reaction. You know what I mean? It's not just dialogue when it's that other stuff that doesn't mm -hmm. fit right and and you know how it is culturally like the it's different like the way like even i remember we had a japanese exchange student when i was in high school and he had a manga um star wars comic with him so i was just like man this guy's my best friend and i of course i haven't talked to him for 30 <laughs> plus years, 40 years whatever but um he was explaining like the the sound effects it wasn't like pew pew or bzz, you know it was like wow -wow, and i was like what <laughs> is that what that sounds like and he's like ah but yeah it's 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 a difference so when you when you see like one punch man and you see the 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 way he's reacting and you know fighting and all that stuff and the sounds that are being made and then you watch the english version you're like mm, that didn't yeah. sound genuine you know what i mean they put a different kind of yeah voice acting it, so. the voice acting is very like it's just different Dude, I don't that's a that's a, a huge thing that is it was hugely unappreciated for a long time so the voice acting mm -hmm. because it's not just like all the gundam stuff is, isn't just um you know in japanese and english like they do multi like it's all, all different yeah it's all over the place you know yeah yeah i started the, the, watching uh i'm sorry <clears throat> to interrupt you but i started watching uh, anime in puerto rico in spanish like oh, really? like like samurai x uh running kenshin um hmm. sankey uh dragon ball all this shit in spanish dude like in mexican spanish like hey papi ¿qué lo está pasando aquí? Oh, shin, aquí vamos. like that dude <laughs> i can watch that all day dude <laughs> but you have to do it like i don't want anyone else to do it I want to do yeah I'll, I'll do a um, voiceover i'll do an abridged version <laughs> there you go you should man um but you remember in gundam in the u.s it was like um there was like nothing no you know, gundam Wave. when i was growing up when I was growing up in the seventies, it was Transor Z, which of course is Mazinger, um, Robotech in the early eighties, and then Speed Racer, which I thought was fantastic. Um, which I got a kick out of when they made the movie, and people were like, "Oh my God, that Speed Racer movie! It's just loud and obnoxious, it's so bright." I was like, "You ever see the cartoon?" That's the show. <laughs> right. That's the show. <laughs> you know, so you obviously never saw the cartoon. Um, but yeah, those those shows that came out, and I even watched, you know, uh, Ultraman, and. Um, the Ultraman figure, Ultraman. classic Ultraman. Yeah, there you go. Um, but oh, I watched that, and uh, Space Giants was another one. And then, um, yeah, I didn't even know about Gundam until I ran into it when I was in Japan when I was talking about before. But then I saw it, and I was like, "Wow, that's really cool." Mm -hmm. And then in the you know later in the '90s is when Wing hit mm -hmm. Cartoon Network. It was on Toonami. Is when Wing yeah. hit. And that was like. Remember they had like commercials. I have it wasn't... The, I, so bro, bro. I have the soundtrack to Toonami um, for that. Um, what do you call it? For, for I guess for that season, if you will, like the, the, the mm. music they used to introduce Gundam Wing with that that bass. Doom, 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 and like, oh, I have yeah. that. Oh my dude! Like I <laughs> like I grew up on that shit. That's a trip, man. You remember the commercials? Yes. It was all. It was, it was all like hardcore, like urban commercials, and they were like level one because it, it wasn't high grade and, and again for mm -hmm. you guys if you don't know about gundam it's um the the standard kits that you see are usually high grade and it's, they're pretty good and they're postable after you get done building them but real grade is the newer stuff that i just showed you and that's got way more detail on it but it's the same size they're one, 144 grades, right one 144 yeah 144 one, and then master grade is one 100 so you get bigger and a perfect grade is like 160th and they're gigantic and it costs hundreds of dollars but um mm, delicious but in that in that commercial they were like level one <laughs> two hours and the other guy's like level seven 13 hours or whatever it was but it was like i was like wow it was like recorded by like dudes that did mtv music videos at the time or whatever but yeah we had it for a while we got it and we um we it was a toys r us remember there was that gundam wing section it was cool the guy that i work with uh Shin i don't remember he's he's, a, he's our director of corporate planning Shin Ueno, and he he was on the toys that made us on the, the the Power Rangers one, he was actually in that talking about what he did on the Power Rangers line, but um, he worked on that whole marketing campaign when they put all that stuff in the Toys R Us and everything. I, look at this. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that. Bobby. Toggis 3, baby. Nice. I, have, I still have this figure from those days. 
Like oh really? Yeah, that, that's yeah. the actual action figure. Two thousand and two. Yeah, yeah. When they that's, they that's had a line the of action, that's the action figure. figure. Yeah, Correct. yeah, the whole line. It was on a card. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's cool, man. That's super cool. Yeah. Damn, sir. you still got that? Fuck yeah, that's like thirty years old, man. <laughs> I graduated like, high school when I bought this shit, dude. <laughs> were you we like were you we like five when you bought that? <laughs> Bro, we old. We old, son. <laughs> we, not that old, man. I guess we are. Um. <laughs> It feels that way, bro. But yeah, Especially... there, was, there was that stuff. The the place that I worked for in, I was outside of Philadelphia. It was a little toy store called Small Blue Planet Toys. And these were the guys that were bringing in the 12-inch stuff from like Dragon and Blue Box and Hot Toys. Back when a Hot Toys figure was like, remember they did the pilots? They did, it was uh, it was basically like Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer. Yes, yes, and yes. And Will Smith, <laughs> you know, yes. but but it didn't say like Will Smith. And, and there was a George Lucas, Lucas there like too, if I'm, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, it was called the director. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, I think oh George fucked God. him up for that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, they, they had those figures, but those figures were like 35 bucks back then, man. Now they're like 250 Dude, even when I started collecting the, the, the Marines, the Space Marines from Aliens, uh -huh. Yeah. They were like a hundred, twenty, hundred and thirty yeah. bucks. Yeah, even the predators, even the predators. Yeah. I used to buy them from Sideshow. Yeah, you know that's when they be, when um... they muddle kits when they were like yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. kits. That's how know? they got around the license. <laughs> this is yeah. fucking great. That's dude. how they got our, they got around the license. They just basically shipped it to you unassembled. You had to pop it together. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, that that store that I was in in Philadelphia, we we were getting some Transformers figures, and then we brought up some Macross model kits and. Um, I don't think we got too deep on Gundam. We got a little bit of Gundam because I remember I had some of the kits that I built myself. But um, you know, then that I went on to the next play, went Sideshow, whatever it was. But um, now it's like, like <laughs> you know, all the stars align because uh, you know this this virus. Give me wrong, this virus fucking sucks, and I hate being trapped in these four walls. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm surprised my wife hasn't murdered me in my sleep yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but um it's you know you gotta stay at home you can't mm -hmm. go out and do shit that you used to do before so gundam is through the roof uh you know there's like tabletop gaming and puzzles and stuff like that but gundam is ridiculously through the roof and i've probably gone through i mean i've got some kits up here i don't know if you can see them on the top up there but i got them <laughs> Oh yeah, I see the oh, yeah, those, shit. those are the unbuilts that are up there. So okay. I got those up there, and then I got some more inside the garage, and I got some Star Wars kits and stuff like that. But I'm still working on building those, and I'm probably halfway through them already. But but when you asked earlier about uh, how I still spend money on it, like I I do. I when I went to Anime Expo last year, while I was at work, I was working at the booth. I bought like three hundred dollars worth of stuff. <laughs> it was ridiculous i was like mm, okay i guess i gotta take one oh it's it's another xia well i've got two xies i might as well get that third one too because xe is not just one it's like the toggies it, there's not just one version there's mm -hmm. multiple versions and variants with different kuchimon and all that so you gotta have them but all, yeah bro. it's a it's a it's a it's a trip there's did you ever see that guy who built that tall geese model and it looks like an actual goose no there's a you should look it up somewhere like a tall geese or, so the guy the guy just found the right parts and a way to fit it together and it's literally a goose with two feet and then he's it's still got all it still looks like a robot like, looks like an actual goose it's pretty funny that's hilarious dude hey, I listen. Some... i'm sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead no i was i see some pretty some pretty cool so... stuff and uh some pretty creative stuff <laughs> so i was gonna ask you because you like robots and you mentioned transformers i know you're mm -hmm. i don't know if you're still a huge fan but i know you were a huge fan of transformers you had a shitload of transformers oh, back then yeah dude i had um I, I guess right around the time when we met is when i was on i was on um was it universe i think it was transformers universe or generations i think it was the same thing it was right around the same time but i was collecting all those it was uh right around when gi joe 25th anniversary figures started coming out okay got it yeah, got it. it was right around that same time um, but yeah, I started, I started buying them again and I went on this kick because I used to go to China all the time. I used to go to China four or five times a year and they had awesome stores in Hong Kong and Kowloon and like the store would be the size of this room that I'm in right now, but this is my office, but, um, it would have like everything, everything in it, Just absolutely impact. everything in it. Yeah. And it wasn't like I am in China, I'm going to get good pricing. They were like, no, 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 we, we, we follow eBay too. So you're paying a fucking premium. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <are> you. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but I can get stuff like the, the, um, so I, I just, I, I decided that I didn't want to be a completist. So okay. I just wanted to buy different versions of Optimus Prime. 
And so I had like the pen, I had the sneaker, I had a hat, the Mickey Mouse one, the um, the bat. There was a bat that uh, that yep. transformed into Optimus Prime, then Leo Prime, and Leo Convoy, and like you know Leo Galaxy Convoy. Prime and Galaxy Convoy, and like all, all the different. So I had something like a hundred, like literally, I think it was like ninety six or something at one point. Oh, it was the most shit. Optimus Primes, and that was anything from like a little PVC guy to like a full mm-hmm. uh, masterpiece Prime. Um, there was actually one time when I, I bought that. You remember that Masterpiece Megatron? Yes. The first one? Yes. I think it was like the NPO 4 or something, 3. Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, I got that at the airport in uh, in Hong Kong, at Lantel Airport, because they had some great shops inside Lantel Airport. And and I bought it. Oh and I'm like, God. oh, my God, I got it. I got it. <laughs> and I put it in my bag. And then we were walking through security, and I put my shit on the thing. <laughs> And I went, oh, my God, I hope that's not transformed into a pistol right now. <laughs> and I'm looking at the screen, and then he goes through, and it's just that clunky-ass <laughs> Megatron. I'm like, oh, thank God. I thought that they were going to be like, get funny, him. Dude. Get that mother. <laughs> it's got a gun. Like, if you would have bought, like, the OG one from G1 that's transformed right. into a gun, oh, you're going to have some problems, bro. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it. <laughs> get him. I, that happened once. It was... um we had prototypes that we were bringing through and it was, uh, it was prototypes. Um, there's a mold master and a paint master. So you, you usually have, um, multiples. Um, so when you're doing production, like, say you got, say you got, a a, a head that you're going to do on a 12 inch figure. So there's the mold master, which is completely unpainted and they use that to make a mold. And then there's a paint master you give them, but then you have a second paint master that looks just like it back here. So they'll go and make a casting of the mold master and then they'll paint it to look like the paint master and send it to you to, to look at next to the one you got so that you can improve it. And um, so we had some mold masters in there, and some paint masters, and there was Han Solo's blaster, the six scale one. And then a couple of rifles that were like Civil War, Revolutionary War rifles or mm-hmm. some shit like that. And the, the thing comes through and the guy, you know, the guy's like this, he's got the white gloves on and the hat and the, you know, the police <laughs> uniform. Just does that doesn't say anything because you know it might be a language barrier but he opens it up and he's looking and he starts pulling them out one at a time and he's grouping all the rifles and the weapons together and this was right around the same time that that whole thing happened with the binary explosives scare where they were okay. saying you take like a a two-part liquid and combine it yeah and yeah, yeah. You, can, you can detonate it like an explosive so they were being really you know sensitive to that it was like five years after 9 11 so there was a lot of sensitivity that was going into airports and everything at the time but this dude was like flat out not having it. He was just like putting all the, <laughs> they were like little tiny plastic rifles and he's got them all together. It doesn't matter. And then, and then he looks at me and he looks over the supervisor and he just puts his hand up like, like, that. you know, he does this weird thing. <laughs> and the supervisor comes over and he turns and he does this, you, you know how, um, in, um, in like Vegas, when a dealer goes, they, they do this thing with their hands to show you that. They're not so, yeah. Yeah. Anywhere. It was kind of like that. He was just like very present. He was like Vanna White about it. I mean, look at the supervisor, like, <laughs> And she looked at it and she was like, <laughs> she gave him this face like, thank you. you. She got it. She's and like, what she, the fuck she, are you she, doing? Just, she just said like this to me. She, she, she picked them up and she put them in the box and closed it. And she said, so, so very sorry. Go ahead, take it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right, cool. But it was this weird kind of dance that went on. I was like, what's going on here? Am I about to get busted for, you know, <laughs> we're running, running guns to Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> Toy rifles. Yep. That's yeah. me. Yeah. That was me. The so shit you do. Runner. Oh yeah, I sold the uh, sold arms. <laughs> I was a gun runner. That's freaking funny. But yeah, man, the Transformers stuff. Like, I I got pretty deep on it for a while there, and I do have something. I got a couple bins out in the garage, but I I, I did kind of give up on it uh, when I refound. Oh something. yeah. That brings it back to the Gundam thing. I... Oh, coffee! Nice. My wife's over here. Like, hey, you got coffee? Hello? But she but she goes like this. She goes like this. So I'm thinking, are we gonna like, are we drinking right now? I'm gonna get it's late. Time. It's like it's about 2,200 hours right now right here. So I'm like, oh yeah. And then I see that hey, you're on the East Coast, man. Yes, I am, baby. You espresso? No, Nespresso. So we got a bunch of different flavors of coffee in there. So I'm I'm excited because we oh, have. Been, oh, okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? But caffeine, caffeine at 10 o'clock your time, man. But caffeine doesn't do shit to me, bro. I'm, I'm yeah, so exactly. you know me, you know me. I'm so fucking hyped as it is. You got that? You got that? You're hot blooded. <laughs> god damn talk man and you know what a little bourbon action would have been great right now mm. I, I missed the boat on that one mm. i had to chill out i had to chill out a little bit at the beginning of this whole thing 
I was I'm like, sorry? I was like at, at the beginning of this whole pandemic uh-huh. thing, I was like, mm, I'm working from home now. You know, I'm done work. Time for beer. W- or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I was for like, real? Jesus Christ, I'm drinking so much now. I got to <laughs> stop, man. So I had to like pull back and... Um, I had to do yeah. the same. I had to do the same because you like. Did you, you go through the same thing? Yeah, you, you're just yeah, like it's you're always happy hour. I got to drive. Go. And 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 at least you work. Like, well, I'm te- you know I'm I'm still looking for a job, but like you you have like an actual job, so then you you get out whatever. But I'm here, and at lunch yeah. I'm like, you know, get my food. I'm like, man, got a little beer action. Let's go. Yeah, and then you know, like, the, the I start watching a movie, and then it's a wrap. So it's so weird that I didn't I didn't actually drink during work <laughs> hours so. though. <laughs> But I'm hey, like, listen, no, you can't drink work. I like, wanted to I say, could. I wanted to say that I love your dedication because you're working from home and you got your work shirt on. Oh yeah, well I had video meetings earlier. Because uh-huh. 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 look at this guy. What do you got back there? This is my uh, my official the Clotter seventy one. <laughs> that's for the year I was born. But yeah, it's it's got it's, like all the. That's pretty cool, Bandai. <laughs> this was like a a company deal that they hooked us up with um you know we we sent care packages out to everybody that works for company because everyone was stuck at home gotcha hooked them up with kits and stuff like that but everyone the shirts and um we've already had people say hey where can i buy that shirt at you remember how it used to be what other companies do they see your shirt where can i buy that from i can't sell it to you because then you show up at the booth and act like you work here (laughs) (laughs) you know because that's exactly what i would do (laughs) Like what? Bro. I work here. I'm just taking these to the to the warehouse. Yeah. Oh, this, this gentleman right here. Hold up. Let me yeah. let me give him. I, I've got to go deliver this. We we do deliveries now. Like, <laughs> bro, bro. like the fuck you do? I've never seen you before. Security. That's funny. Hey, so you, do yeah. you do you do any uh, transformers then anymore? Or you're, you know, it's all well, Gundam. I, I, I do actually. Kits. Um, no. It, there's a company called Flame Toys. It sounds like I'm oh, showing yes. my product, but. Yep, there's Drift from Flame. Oh, I've seen it. Yep, that, it's and that's a model kit, and it's pretty nice. It's pretty incredible, actually. I, it's weird, man. When you build so much Gundam, mm-hmm. you kind of get used to that engineering. So when I was doing a different kit, I was like, "Oh, this is much different than what I'm used to." Oh, really? Um, just just the engineering wise of it, in a way, because it's cool. Don't get me wrong, and the detail is fantastic, but. Uh, Gundam's got some, or Bandai's got some pretty insane, like, engineering that they put in. It's all proprietary stuff. They, they got course. their own factory in Japan. And, but um, yeah. even, like, what? like that um, that uh, Strike Freedom that I was showing you, uh-huh. the the arm section from the wrist up to the shoulder is on the sprue. And when you cut it free of the sprue, you bend it, and it's actually articulated, and there's pieces on the inside. So it's it's, like... It's like a multi-injection phase what? kind of thing. Wow. Where they're shooting basically like two different plastics at the same. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can see one up here. So it's already, you don't have to do anything. You take it off. Well, and yeah, it's you, already... you cut it off and then you the armor snaps up over top of it. Um, let me see if this unit up here. That, that's impressive. I don't know anything about this crap, but that's impressive. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gundam over mm-hmm. here. Well, this is actually a really good example because see, this is a really good example because it's two different colors mm-hmm. of plastic. So this black section in the middle here is one color, and then the, the red stuff is another color. But all these pieces around here articulate. How so this is like the that? arm here. So these this elbow works when you cut it off. So yeah, I don't know how to do it. I think it's magic. <laughs> it might be some black magic, but um, it, it, I think that's one of the things that really drove me to it too is that that fascination. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, a, it's the beautiful model kits when you get them finished and everything, but that fascination to it, where you know, as you're working on it, you're like, "Wow, that's pretty fucking cool." You know, it's not just Legos where you're just slamming Legos. Together. Yeah, yeah. Nothing against Legos out there for Lego people. Don't don't boycott. Oh, they'll be hating right now. Because, it's a wrap. <laughs> the, 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 the brick peeps. The brick peeps are coming from my ass. <laughs> the peeps are like, fuck you, dude. Um, but yeah, it's um, there's an article out there somewhere for a professor in Japan where they actually did a study on a specific to Gundam. And I mean, this could be any kind of building or that kind of process, but mm-hmm. it's like a games and theory kind of thing. The blood flow gets going in your brain and it's actually very healthy for you and it gets you in kind of like a Zen mode. 
Oh, straight um, up, dude. Where, oh my god. Where it can help your it helps your stress and anxiety out. So that's a that's that's one of the things for me, man. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, it really is. It's not just like a. It's not the, the competition thing is cool, but I don't do it for competition. It's like the war mm-hmm. the uh, Warhammer stuff. Like I don't play the game. I don't. I have no idea how to play the game, but I have a blast, just like this. And I was sometimes when I look at the model kits, I remember what I was listening to or watching. Because really? you got background noise, you know what I mean? Of course. So I, sometimes I'll look at something and be like, oh, yeah, I was listening to whatever. I was watching Star Wars again. <laughs> <laughs> For the billionth time. Right. But that's, yeah, dude, relaxation, um, man. I agree with you 100%. Every yeah. time I feel a model kit on this co- little corner I have right here, dude, it, it, it's just. It, it's cool, mm, right? It, yep. it, gives you, it gives you a moment. And um, so I guess that's why I really get pissed off. Like we were talking about earlier, like when you break something or you lose something. Because if you drop something, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, it's gone. It just hits the ground and it disappears. So if you have Gundam kits, <laughs> um, I, I don't know what you could possibly use. But I, I would literally drop something on the floor, and I hear it hit the floor, and I tear the entire room apart looking for it, and you just can't find it. If you and have like, carpet, it's a wrap. First of all, because yeah, one, you won't all. hear it, and two, it's gonna get sucked in there. <laughs> You're done. You know what I got? This is my uh, your little cup. <laughs> so this is this is uh. Oh, I don't know where mine's at. I got out. Okay. I don't know if you see that. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, those little pieces of plastic from that I cut off of the thing because I don't want them all over the carpet. But this sometimes, little bathtub. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have I have this shit here. I, I put all the the extra pieces of plastic mm. that I cut off of the pieces, and sometimes I'll be like, "What happened mm. to that little piece?" And then I dump this out, and I'll be like, "Oh, there it is! I threw it in the fucking cup." Oh, <clears throat> God. Oh shit. And this is where I have like most of the. the oh, the, nice! The, the ramble round. Oh, this is my favorite mobile suit. Like, oh, hands down, yeah. the golf costume. Yep. God damn, I I still want a freaking um like a like a perfect grade. Like I want sixty. It doesn't have to be a perfect grade, but give me something big, man. Fuck, oh, it's such a good goddamn. Dude, model. that's that's it's such a bulky like fantastic suit. Oh, dude. You know, it's just got that beefiness to it. Where you know the Gundam kits are usually high speed and thin, mm-hmm. but the and the Zaku's are pretty cool too, but. They got a very stormtrooper feel to them. That goof custom is just like a, a Darth Vader out of the stormtrooper. Oh. You know what I mean? It's still delicious, dude. The um, uh, the Saku, um, the Psycho Saku from uh, Thunderbolt is fucking incredible, yeah. dude. I love. That. I've I've got the I've got the one forty four kit of it, but I haven't built it yet. But you know that Verkata that they got out of the one one hundred MG kit. It's like it's massive because yeah, of the the, the tanks the, on it. Yeah. Oh my god. I've got um, my Grails, my uh. My holy grails. There's the the uh, dendrobium. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> <laughs> the full, I've got one of the small ones, but the full size one. So, guys, if you can imagine this, Jesus imagine, Christ! Uh, imagine the Gundam figure is this big. I mean, they the really... dendrobium unit is like a giant spaceship that the Gundam sits inside and pilots. So the kit itself is like that big. massive There's a cannon and, that sticks off the front that goes out like two feet. Oh, shit. Uh, but yeah, that's that's one of my grails. Um, mm. Perfect grade Millennium Falcon. That's Ooh. one of my grails. One day, one day I'll I'll get that and build it and paint it and do everything to it. And then um, I think the other one was the Deep Striker. Have you seen the, the Deep yeah. Striker? Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. It's 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 not it's not mainstream. It's a different, but it's <clears throat> it's like a um, a Starcraft killer. So it looks like a, a Gundam beefed out with a giant cannon on it and all that kind of stuff so mm-hmm. um just because it's different i think that's why i like it so much but i had that goof custom uh ramble Rowell is a really cool character and um, he's awesome yep i love him if if he's in the movie he should be played by um the guy who played uh ron swanson uh, what's that actor's name oh my fucking god yes <laughs> yeah what's the yes. actor's name that comedian um, oh my god yeah he's a partial wreck Yep, yep. He's been doing a bunch of stuff, but yeah, now you gotta look him up. <clears throat> yeah, I have to. I have to. Um, I don't gonna remember it. Uh, Offerman, Nick Offerman. Nick, there you go. Nick Offerman. <laughs> I, I just remember him because he's got a wood shop in in Los Angeles. He's actually a carpenter. He he um, does. It's crazy. Yeah, he's like a legit. He's like a legit woodworker guy. But yeah, he'd be perfect for Ramble Ralph. Agreed, dude. You just go that, back I, to the the mustache. I, I'm seeing. Obviously, you've seen. Uh, what do you call it? What was it? I'm sorry. Hold up. Now I'm confusing everything. 
um origins was he in origins he was yeah, yeah. okay okay because yeah, i saw he, him he there was in Origins a little bit yeah yeah a little bit. origins was a trip too origins was yeah good. It, it's it? it's it's wild because it's like again if you're not a gundam person origins was like uh rogue rogue one you know it, it was like before all the main stuff the big story and everything and they actually went back and did a prequel that was really good and it showed mm -hmm. you where everybody came from it showed you the politics like pt was talking about earlier about the political aspects of it and um like all that dark human stuff in it <laughs> but it did it really well and it was like the the birth of the gundam it was the birth of the um the mobile suits remember they're like mobile workers they look like yeah. giant like uh construction vehicles with like football helmets on them but and they became the zaku and all that and yeah, I have the Dude, little ones on, on this corner right here. I forgot the... Uh, oh, my God. They're the, the very small looking... I forgot what they're called. It, Whatever. It, they're, these, they're really the Shokugan? Tiny. The Shokugan no. ones? A little, little tiny? Wait, wait. <laughs> Let me show you. So, so, you see this little guy right here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I forgot what they're called right now for some reason, but uh, um, I I think it's a Shoku. I can't remember if it's action. No, it's not Micro Wars. Uh, I should know this. <laughs> I, I know, right? Don't you work with the same company, right? son? <laughs> I... Oh my god, what is the name of this? Why can I not remember? Um, it's not Converge, either. Converge, Converge, Converge. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Converge. There you go. Here. There you go. You Converge. better have one, <laughs> right? <laughs> This is like my little mini store right here. They they made a, a white base, if I'm not mistaken, too, which is oh, awesome. Yeah, it's big, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty dope. I like I like the um, converge. They you know what they remind me of? Which is, you know, unrelated, obviously, but um the oh my god, the Transformers stuff with the beasts. Oh my god, what they're called. A uh, Beast Wars. No 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 not Beast Wars. Beast machines? No, no. It was um they were like actual uh uh beasts, but they had um like armor pieces, if you will. It was a Japanese thing, and then they brought it, you know. Oh, you I what? know what you're talking about. Oh, it, Jesus, what's the name of it's that? A, it's eluding me. Carajo. I know what you're talking about. But you know what I'm talking about? So it just, they were small, you know, they didn't really have that much articulation. Yeah, it was beast uh, something or other, but yeah, I remember, I remember what you're talking about. <clears throat> we'll, but, we'll remember it, like, in a couple of days and be like, dude! Yeah, I'm going to text you. You like, remember? Oh. Fuck There's some crazy it. shit out in Japan though, man. Look, this is a uh, Nekobuso. So it's like a um, a little model kit, but it's a cat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I like see a cat, it, dude. A cat in his in his cat house. <laughs> but they got one where it's just a cat like sitting there, and he's in like a robot suit. But you know how cats are cats are assholes. So I think it, I could say that because I got seven cats. You what? Yeah, we got seven cats. You guys got seven cats. Do we got seven cats and two pup or two dogs that are um, a little over a year old, and the Sazabi or the um, Sananju? That oh, was the Sananju, the red Sananju. Uh huh. <clears throat> um, the real grade. Yeah, they ate it. <laughs> oh. I was just like, when I found it the first time, I was like, oh, the dogs got it. <laughs> yeah, like, but it was on a shelf, so I know the cats were in cahoots with them. They, they, I'm pretty sure the cat was like. <laughs> fuck your gundam and the dogs are like thanks dinner. like that's like i don't um, want this fucking dog here anymore so you know what let's get him yeah. in trouble he's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't think about that because maybe i'll turn they were trying to snuff the dogs but um yeah. but yeah it was it happened a couple times it was i i had some things on the um you know i got these little things here battle beasts battle beasts battle that's beasts God, look at that See, it just comes to you <laughs> it just comes to you there we go um, god damn it. these these little gator clippy things yeah. Oh, uh huh. Can, and, and I hold my model kits almost like a spray. Yeah. I made um, it myself with uh, skewers and I bought those oh, clips and. Exactly. You bought a clips and you could just do it yourself. Um, had had that sitting out in the kitchen because I had it up back and I spray primed it and came back the next day and one of the cats <laughs> just came over and was like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> this thing up here. Mm -mm. This was. Um, the the first member who I told you about that Warhammer um, kit that I got from the magazine, and I was like, I'm gonna try something really cool, and I found this dude. 
you know, it's like a um, ghost horse kind of thing. Okay. And then the guy on top of it looks kind of like a, whoops, sorry, sorry, broken. Like a Grim Reaper looking dude with a big scythe and all that. And, and then he's got these big giant wings. And and I put the whole thing together. And I painted it. And I felt really good about it. I actually took it to the shop. I was such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, grade me. Define me. Define me. Um, and the guy was like, oh, this is really nice, man. You did a great job. I was like, oh, cool, thanks. So I got it back, and I'm like, I'm never going to play this game. I don't, I don't have any friends to play it. It's not like my wife and kids are going to be like, yeah, let's play some more hour tonight. So I was like, maybe I'll just put it up on eBay and see if I can get back what I paid for the model, and then I'll just go buy another model and, and keep up the hobby. I'm taking the pictures, and then I noticed oh. the, the, tip, the tip of the wing. I don't know if you can see it there. Oh, I see the sure. – uh, it's yeah. out of focus, but I can't see the – Yeah. Totally chewed it up. Mm-hmm. So I had it set up. I had the background. Like, I put the white background on. I was getting the lights in. I was just, like, finding any lights I could get my hands on. I'm like, oh, this thing's going to look good. I probably made, like, <laughs> 15, 20 bucks more than I paid for this thing. And I was like, oh, fuck, the cat's chewed it. I was like, <laughs> how much did they the box. How much did they know for? Uh, I think the, the model itself was, like, 30 bucks or something like that. So I, I probably could have gotten... 40 Damn, or 50 though. for it. I'm not not looking to flip it to be a millionaire or anything like that. But like I said, I'd put it back into the um into the hobby. Yeah, I but like 30 bucks. That from, that's like dude, I ran into um mm. when I lived in Delaware. Yes, that's right. I lived in Delaware. That's why I'm so energetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I lived in Delaware, I, there was this comic book store near me, and I went over to it, and the guy that was working there the one weekend was actually my science teacher from high school. It was so weird. I was like, dude, I, that, oh my God, you're working. He's like, oh yeah, this, I'm retired now and I just do this. And in the back, they had like a shit ton of GI Joe figures. And I was like, wow, man, you guys got pretty much everything. And he said that him and his son would, would buy lots on eBay or go to, to markets or whatever it is, the flea markets. And they would get them and then they'd take out the ones that they need, the ones that look good. And then that's their collection. And then everything else, they go resell, make some more money, and then go buy some more shit. And that's how they just did it. And it was like a thing they did. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I never had that mentality of, oh, I'm going to gotcha. buy a Gundam kit. I'm going to flip it next year for twice as much. Or I'm going to buy a Star Wars black figure and hold on to it for a year and flip it. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to buy a $3,000 Sideshow statue and flip it for $3,001 the next day. <laughs> a $300 Sideshow statue and then flip it up <laughs> for three grand. <laughs> Yeah, remember those days? <sighs> you don't have to tell me. I still, I still regret selling my Hulk, man. The original oh, Hulk, you know? the the Andy, uh, Andy, I forget his the, name now. The Bergholz. But yeah, that Hulk, yeah. the green one. Big, yeah. That, yep. Oh my god! You dude. sold that thing? Jeez. I sold it for like a grand or something. Wow. Years ago too. Like it used. To, I I look for it now and I just cry. It's like <clears> five, yeah, people asking fun, for fun. like five grand for it. I'm like, <laughs> so I've got um. Remember this? Wait. Oh, oh, dude, I still have it. It broke. I le- I left it to my uh my little brother and like w- it's still in Texas with my at my parents' house. I have that in the Fantastic Four one. Remember that the yeah, thing the was Fantastic the Four one was but yeah. Um, Pablo did that. Pablo Villano. Pablo v- that yes. That one. That one was um. I did the early design work on that, and I, I didn't design a lot of stuff. But there was every now and then because I had the degree in illustration, I would want to draw something up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never finished anything drawing wise, like the Silver Brothers or any of those other guys do. They do that high concept artwork. Um, so I just did a sketch, and then um, the the guys at Gore Group down in Argentina, they they had their guys clean that sketch up, and so there was a second illustration based off of my initial chicken scratch that they did that was like super clean, and then there was the final piece that Martin sculpted. I think you know, My and man. I got pictures of all three of them, and I got them put together in a cut mat, and um, I I took the two photos out, and they were done on nice paper. The two it wasn't photos, it was a print, mm-hmm. and I had everybody that worked on it, like the painter, the sculptor, the mold cast guy, like everybody, everybody signed it up, and then Stan Lee came to the studio, and Stan signed both. And then I, I had uh, one of the guys that was going down to Argentina to see the guys down there take both copies. And had the guy sign it over there? Yeah. 
dude that's fucking crazy and then, that's amazing and then the one and then i told him keep one and the other one comes back to me <laughs> so that they have one and the guy left it on the airplane no 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 <laughs> time out, time out. so you're, you're you're telling me this amazing story and it ends with the guy leaving yours yeah. With Stanley's signature, Martin Canal, everybody from the core group, everybody mm -hmm. that was involved in the fucking yeah. airplane. Yeah. Bro, why would you tell me this? This is heartbreaking. You know, he actually didn't tell me. He waited like weeks until somebody else came to me and were like, hey, man, he, oh, he don't want to talk to you about this. Oh, my God. I, was like, what? I, I won't, I won't, I'll tell you later who it was, but. <laughs> it's not it, it wasn't it wasn't mean or anything like that it was just the fuck up but i know i know it's so bad. i hope somebody on here on the cleaning crew was like oh wow that's what i'm talking about I'm put this on the internet <laughs> or no, they just they, went i think they were just like trash <laughs> well they're just fucking cleaning i don't give a shit let's go <laughs> yeah and i got a picture on my facebook of me of stan lee's like signing it on me standing behind him like yeah i'm a retard <laughs> i can't say that <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. man no, listen yeah. i had um uh from a nerd uh, from a nerd standpoint <clears throat> yeah I had la last uh, my last guest was uh, Kevin Ripple, the uh, composer, and mm -hmm. his, his name is Kevin Ripple. And on Instagram, he has K and Ripple, so um, Ripple. So I'm like, yeah. bro, that's very unsensitive. So you guys are like, <laughs> I'm on a roll, just just alienating people in this podcast. It's fantastic. <laughs> These intolerant, <laughs> intolerant assholes coming on your podcast. No, I that's. That, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. That's that's just a uh, <laughs> me being self-deprecating. Well, you've been working all day, right? You're tired already. You're doing this podcast, yeah. which I appreciate. You know what I'm saying? So I can't uh, the last time I did a podcast. This is actually pretty cool though, because I don't know how many people know P2, but he's been doing this a long time. Like <laughs> this was this was your this was your your passion like back in the day, man. That's yeah, how that's how you got been. all those you know the back when were you doing the sideshow reviews and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but you were having so much fun with it and, and kind of like what I was talking about earlier about, um, you know, that Gary Vaynerchuk kind of personal yeah. brand and everything. That was you, man. That was you not to cast a bunch of like love <laughs> on you that I normally would anyway, but, um, it, it, it really was, it was like, that's how people knew who you were. And it's because you could actually see that you were enjoying it. You were just like some dude that was like, I'm going to be this guy today. <laughs> <laughs> you, weren't like a, you weren't like Larry the cable guy. Like, no man, you know, that's awesome. I hope, I've character. always enjoyed it, dude. Always enjoyed it. Yeah. It's it's been a passion of mine forever, and it still is. And even if I can't figure out what the fuck to do with it, doesn't matter. And now I'm doing this right. podcast, which is fantastic. I'm I'm enjoying right. the shit out of it. I'm four episodes in. I get to talk to awesome people about their passions, and it's been right. fantastic. So maybe I should have been doing this from the get go, man. I just I, I mean realized. it's it's cool, man. It's cool. It's like you know if you enjoy it and you got the passion to do it, then you don't have to worry about money and stuff. People ask me like exactly. companies that I've been with before that I left, and they're like, "Why don't you just start your own thing?" And I'm like, "Well, I don't have a valid idea, and I ain't got no money. So <laughs> like, you can't you can't just produce a product line by like, hey, this is cool. I got a great idea. Let's make that mm -hmm. happen." A lot of people Nobody don't know like, how much money yeah, it costs yeah, just to get a fucking yeah. the the molds. <laughs> the molds, or or even if you're gonna, if you're gonna go get a license. Like, oh, they're not even talking about licenses. Good lord, yeah, licenses! Yeah. Get that Vaseline ready, because you gotta right. Because <laughs> you gotta pay up front, and then you gotta pay royalties. So it's not it's not just like yeah, I'm gonna go make a really cool whatever figure. It's like no, you gotta you gotta pay and. They got to look at it and they got to get underneath and, and art direct it. And, and that's another thing, you know yeah. What? Because you know what? It's their shit. It's not yours. Like, you mm -hmm. do whatever you want with it, but it's their shit. You got to follow the rules kind of thing. So, um, it ain't that easy. So, I was just like, I'm... but the, it's like what you see. You do what you love, you know? I mean, exactly. you got to love it all. You can't you can't just be like, oh, I had a bad day. I had a customer yell at me or I had a um, or whatever. You can't just mm -hmm. be like, oh, that's it. I'm done. I've had it. It's the gig, man. It's the whole thing. Like, there's times I'm sure you're just like, you know, I want to go. I got a podcast I'm gonna set up right now. I'm gonna do fun. I've got a guy coming in. Or if you haven't had this happen to you yet, I'm sure it'll eventually happen. It's something else will go on. You know, your power will go out, or you got a water mm -hmm. pipe burst, or something like that. And you, fuck, man, I can't believe this is happening. But <laughs> you, you figure it out, and you get over it, and you go back to the podcast. You do it again. You don't just pack up and walk away. You know, exactly. That means you didn't have a passion for it in the first place. So. Right. Have right, been doing right. It. When people are like, "What are you gonna do if you ever get out of the toy industry?" I was like, "Get out of the toy industry." Who said like, how was gonna I get out? <laughs> yeah, really. I go work at Target. 
go 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 stock aisles in the toy section. The toy section. Yeah, that's probably what I would end up doing. Whatever it was, I'd gravitate back towards Toy Story Home because it's just you know, mm-hmm. it's in your blood. It's in your blood after a while. You know, you just, hell yeah, bro. You, you yeah. get to that point where you're just. I mean, I don't know everything about everything. I if I sat here and tried to tell you that I knew every Gundam, you know, mobile suit configuration and every character for so and so and you'd be like oh this motherfucker <laughs> here we go again yeah, here we go again this guy but no it's it's a it's it's like you say it's the passion for it you know yeah so, dude, that's why dude i was so excited when you got this job with bandai like i'm like dude this is a fucking no brainer this guy's a goddamn dude you've been it, it, it's funny dude because <laughs> i remember seeing it on facebook when i posted it and you were like dude that's amazing and then i remember like four years before that when i worked for, went to work for gentle giant and i kept <laughs> it kind of quiet my first day i took a picture of the front door and you were like dude you went to <laughs> I'm always excited you're like for my, you, man. Uh, yeah. You're like my fan club. <laughs> Bappy, that's what's up. I still got that picture of you going like this with my picture on there or whatever. Like with that. Oh, really? Shirt. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. You guys were like taking pictures video. around. What it called? Throughout the office. Because I thought I'd have Tim with it too. With that picture. Oh, at... Jesus Christ. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, but it's been forever, dude. <laughs> I remember. I remember um, Help Want It when we filmed Help Want It. It was a marketing wow. video that Sideshow shot, and I got to play, me and Adam Ostegar got to play the good guys, and P2 was a zombie. <laughs> That's right. Fucking There's a lot of that. people in that. Marty Marty Kleba was in that. Remember that? And what, uh, Tyler, was, um, Marty Kleba was uh, the little person that the was little in dude. Parts okay. of the Caribbean. From and was the big Scrub dude, too. And, yeah, and the big guy, Tyler, who's been in a bunch of stuff, too. He was How, he was how the hell did you guys dude. get those two in there? They were friends with Adam because Adam worked on set on Pirates and he met all those guys. Gotcha, and, gotcha. Um, and he was just like, hey, we're doing this goofy thing. You want to be involved? And they're like, fuck yeah, we do. You know? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go have some fun. And we had fucking we, we fun. Were, we were camped out there for a couple of days, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when we I got there, dude, fucking the, the, the time difference was fucking with me so hard. Dude. Oh, so, yeah. Because uh, uh, Tim and, uh, and Kevin took me to a... Uh, um, the concert, John Williams concert, and oh, then right. at the at the Hollywood Bowl. At the, at that, the bowl. Yeah. So and I was falling asleep. It was, uh, dude. I was trying my hardest just to stay up. And then after that, by the way, by the way, <laughs> small detail. When we were driving towards the concert, they were. They, I didn't know because this was a surprise. And they were telling me that we were talking about composers. And they're like, so, Danny Elfman and John Williams. What do you think about John Williams? I'm like, you know what? I love John Williams, but like, I can't really listen to his music by itself. Like, I would say, you know, somebody else, you know, because like, it's cool for the in the movie and shit. And they're like, uh-huh. you know, we're going to see John Williams now. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> but I love him. But I love him. It was they're amazing. Like, no, 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 I really love him. I really love him. They were like, we'll just turn around. It Come was on, amazing. Let's go home. It was amazing. But the point That's is, cool. when I was getting my makeup done, dude, I was fucking passing. It was just four hours of makeup just to get my yeah. fucking. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you had a, you had a, um, you had almost a, a complete, yeah, prosthetic over your face. Mm-hmm. I think your chin was painted. No, I had. But I think TV everything else was, yeah. Just... You had the teeth, yeah, and all that shit. It was awesome. I didn't have I to do that. I was the. I know. I was the star. I was the movie star. <laughs> Did you have the movie poster, by the way? Like, yeah, do you have yeah, I got them in, they're, they're in the garage. I got both of them. I That's think you, you signed. Did you sign it? I, I had everybody. I hope so. Everybody signed it. Yeah. I hope so because that means you um, didn't come to me to sign it, and then we have a problem. Yep. That means I'm gonna have to go over there and slap in the face. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. Hey, I'm still here, so I'm still available. Just slap me over to sign it. <laughs> Just pay. I don't know. Well, then I gotta break bucks. it out of the frame, <laughs> and I gotta get out. Yeah. It actually mm. got it framed. You did. Um, yeah, I got two. There's two of them. It was the main poster, and then the one with me and Adam, and. Um, Oh my god, I forget her name. It was the 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 lady who was in there with us. She was an actual aspiring actress. Like she was the only one with acting oh, talent. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she was an actual like legit actress, and she was like, "Yeah, I'll do this. Why not?" You know. Mm-hmm. And okay. um, we're kind of like, <laughs> Bruh, and then it's... Martin Marty Marty comes over, and Tyler's with him, and we're just like, burr, 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 and they're like, "You guys are idiots." <laughs> <laughs> we're like, "Yep." And then Adam and I dressed up that zombie scene where you're shooting it from the roof. Yeah. And you see all the zombies moving around. Two of the zombies in there had military gear on with hats on. It was me and Adam. We were just <laughs> So the guys that were like the main characters or whatever, here we are walking around in this. That is Help funny. Wanted. 
Look at that. Yep, yep. Collectibles. Help one. Help one. It, it's on their on their site. I think. It's a good thing you're not paying me for YouTube. this. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, you know, Adam lives right here too. Like he moved down here to Boca, so he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He moved out there a while back. He went like, and helped them uh, with Disney Shanghai. He did a bunch of work out at Disney Shanghai before they opened that up, and then he, mm -hmm. then he moved back, and then he moved to Florida. Yep, I feel yep. so bad for him, man. He had a he had a U-Haul truck in Burbank, and then his wife. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yep. And somebody Heartbreak, somebody stole the truck, and I mean, you gotta understand this guy Adam is like Adam Ostergaard is an amazing artist, and he's got amazing character art that he's been doing his entire life, and a lot of that shit was on that U-Haul truck when he got Vic. Yep. And I was just like, oh my god, man, it was that tragic. Said we. Yes, but, it was, man. Gut wrenching. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you imagine if that happened to me, I would just. Oh. Dude, man, I, 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 I mean, yeah. I but think the, the scariest, if anyone robbed my house, the scariest thing about that would be I'd, I'd have to shoot somebody in front of my kids. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but they're going to be dead. Like, <laughs> all, yeah, no, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be fucking dead. Um, but <laughs> the, uh, the, just the amount of, of stuff that he had. I mean, and he used to just draw shit like off the cuff. Like he, I remember he drew this Winnie the Pooh for me. I got it somewhere around here. He drew this really great Winnie the Pooh because I was a, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, I, I loved Winnie the Pooh. And um, my family called me Pooh Bear. So there you go. He got something to make fun of me about. <laughs> um, but he found out about it. <laughs> he drew this picture of Winnie the Pooh. It was just like, yay. But in a water bubble, it said, hey, Scott, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, every time I looked at it, I cracked up. And it was hilarious, you know. So I kept it up on my wall. And every time I was in a bad mood, I just looked at it. And I was like, yeah, Winnie yeah. the Pooh. <laughs> Let me go fuck myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah take that, you serious, <laughs> you serious piece of shit. <laughs> um, that's but yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. So when are you moving out to California? Uh, that's a good question, man. Hey, listen, I'm going to talk to Bandai. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I tell him I got connections. Yeah, and, so tell, uh, him you, tell him you know me. They'll hang up on you in a second. And, uh, <laughs> be like, like yeah, who's... I know uh, that Clutter. Is that, is Clutter, that Clutter, Clutter with a K? Cl oh, yeah, Clutter with a K. Yeah, bye. Bloop. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, we, we talked about Hello? it. <laughs> My wife is doing good with her interior design right now. Um, oh, fantastic. So, yeah, awesome. it, fun, yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because, you know, I'm still out of work. So, like, I'm glad that, you know, I have a partner and she is the, 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 the virus didn't affect her as much. Right. Like their, their, mm. their workload went down, but she still had a job. So that's you know. fantastic. That's good. So I'm, so, I'm glad to hear that. Cause mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Cause it's basically, we, it's um, yeah, it, it, we didn't, we didn't have anybody, um, that we, we didn't have to like cut back or anything like that. We, you know, um, so every, my team is still all there. Um, That's beautiful. That's beautiful. From home. Um, well, you were telling me sales were up, right? Because of people staying home yeah, yeah, and then buying model kits. kits and yeah, people, people build model kits. So it's, it's doing really well. Um, but who the hell knows what it's going to be like six months from now, you know? <sighs> yeah, dude, I can't. Wait I, I mean, I, I heard Dis I, I heard Disney World's open, but uh, I don't want to go to Disney World. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like getting in a car. Like, oh, I'm a really good driver. It's like, yeah, but what about the other 99.9 .9 mm. percent people? Out the road? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, Disney's safe. And you're like, is it? Is it really? <laughs> you know what's funny up here? In the, we got Universal, and um, they they should they opened and they have a commercial. You know, we social distancing and we're sanitizing all this shit, blah blah blah. And then when you see the actual footage of people on Universal right now, it's fucking jam packed. People oh, is fucking, it really? You know, yeah, dude. Like it's like a normal day. You know what I'm saying? So I figured they were like gonna That's, ease it in. You yeah. know, have so people could spread out. No, well, just man. like just like a normal. Everybody fucking day. jump in the pool. The water's fine. Jump in the pool. So it's crazy. Yeah. We've been trying to be really, really cool about it. Um, and not do really anything. We went, we went hiking in Utah where there was really nobody out there. Um, we went camping for, um, Halloween. We oh, got yeah? a spot over at the Girl Scout camp that they're renting out the Girl Scout camp, but they just rent it to one family at a time. So there's not a bunch of people in there. So we were the only people in this entire campground. That's awesome. Um, and cause my wife is a, is a, a, a den leader or, you know, she, she's got a whole Girl Scout troop. My daughter doesn't know anything. Gotcha. And she's been absolutely amazing. Because, I mean, just by the fact that we're nerds and we buy toys and shit should <laughs> preclude us with from marriage. <laughs> 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 like, like, women are crazy. Like, any woman that would marry a guy like us has just got to be insane. Um, <laughs> but, no, she's she's fantastic. And she's been trying to find ways, like, to, to just do something, get us to do something, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this is hard, man. I mean, you know how it is. You're stuck inside. Yo. Like, it's, it's test. I think Wuhan, where, where the virus started at, they said the divorce rate was through the roof. <laughs> you know, three really? months after it cleared out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? She hasn't murdered me yet, so I must be doing something right. You I know. know. She puts Same up here. with all this bullshit up here, you know? So yeah. it's, um, I'm pretty, um, I think it's pretty cool. And I, I'll, all joking aside, it is, it is pretty cool to have somebody that's like, yeah, that's you. you know? mm-hmm. They get it. A hundred percent. My wife designed this like, place for me right here, this office. Like, she's, that's fantastic. That's, that's fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> she's like, I'm so glad you're working for that company now. And you get a discount on all that shit you buy. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think I, why do you think I applied for the job? <laughs> um, that's hilarious. But yeah, I love, I, I love how that, your your Zoom. I'm sorry, but but your Zoom says her name on there. <laughs> oh, does it really? Yeah, yeah. It says Tracy. <laughs> That's there. right. That's right. That's my name. Tracy Clotter. Okay. <laughs> She's watching. She's actually out with the kids right now, so I feel. That's the kids have been shoving like little envelopes underneath the door for me. Oh, they're cute. When, when's your uh, four year old um's birthday? Saturday. 14. Oh, okay, so wow, now got it. Because my son is, yeah. is is four, and he's gonna be um, five in January. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty mm-hmm. close. Yeah. Um. You, if you know, if you've one day your son goes up to be a cool kid, then maybe. Uh, I'll listen, let him listen. <laughs> my There's no question. He's gonna be a fucking <laughs> awesome kid, bro. He's gonna be an awesome kid. Have you not seen this kid? Guy is acting Dude, fucking Terminator Two yeah, shit. I'm, I'm um, I'm almost positive my kids are gonna grow up and and their significant others are gonna be in the sports and shit like that because I don't sports at all. Like you know, <laughs> I'm like the the not like I I watched boxing when I was a kid. I watched the I watched Boom Boom Mancini kill that dude. I don't know if you ever there was no. a Boom Boom Mancini the boxer. He was in the late seventies. He fought this uh, guy from Korea and uh, he beat him so bad the guy died in the hospital or died in an ambulance on the way to the hospital. Jeez. And I was just like. You know, being from Philadelphia, you got to have some kind of interest in boxing because Rocky and you know, like, but uh, but when I saw that, I was like eight or nine. I was like wait, 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 <laughs> traumatized for the rest wait, of his life. <laughs> wait, that dude's dead. So I watched boxing for when I was a teenager, but then I gave up on it after uh, Tyson went through his thing. And you don't but watch that was any about sports? It. Sports? Nope. nope, no sports. Wow, not not interested. I'll watch the same movie like five times in a row before I watch a sports game. And it's, I, I don't have anything against sports. I think it's all, you know, I respect athletes and all my brother's a huge sports fan. My dad was both, you know what I mean? Like he was the sci-fi guy and he was also a sports okay. guy. So, you know, he took me to see star Wars. My brother went with us and I went to the world series in Philadelphia and, you know, you know, I, I, I got both of them, but my dad was the, he was the guy that was like, yeah, this stuff is cool. You should pay attention to this stuff. So your guy got you so, into this whole sci-fi, like yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it was pretty much the, um, well, Star Wars, but um, he was never a Star Trek guy, but I do remember Alien, the first Alien movie. Fuck yeah! Uh, Christmas Eve, uh, and I think it was a VHS copy. This had to be Alien came out in seventy nine, mm-hmm. so I want to say it was like eighty two. So I was like eleven ish. <laughs> and he he popped that shit in on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Christmas fucking Eve, and, baby. And uh, and what's his name? Right. What's his name? What's his name? Goes into seizures and the blood start coming out. And I'm like, why is the spaghetti coming out of his chick? Because he was eating spaghetti like right before that. And I was that's like, right, that's right. My God, he just ate some horrible spaghetti. And then that thing came out. And I was like, <laughs> what was that? I was amazed. And that was pretty much it, man. I was, I was hooked. That was, but that was the gateway to even more science fiction. You know, mm-hmm. Star Wars was very Star Wars. And then you see an alien, and you're just like, holy shit, anything is possible. I love science fiction now. Absolutely love it. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the the Gundam movie in live action. But um, I really hope it's done well. There's a lot of people yes, that didn't sir. like Pac Rim, and they thought it was goofy, and you know all that stuff. And it was like, man, nah, you, you, you either love it or hate it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, in that yeah, in the second one, is... they they had a Gundam unicorn statue. I saw when I was watching. The Did movie. it really? I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. That they're they're fighting and and you know there's a spot where one of the legs falls and then you see a Gundam unicorn statue. I'm huh. like, oh shit, Gundam, Gundam. 
<laughs> no, when when Mako went down, a, spoiler alert, when Mako went down a helicopter, I was just like, I can't watch any more of this. I stopped uh, watching it. The second, the second one. Yeah, the second one. I know. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> there was, do you know that there was an actual live action Gundam movie? Oh, I, please. <laughs> the TV. <laughs> And it's canon, cabron. It's fucking canon. It's in Universal no. Century. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Is it really? Yes, it is. Yes, I, it is. I came across it by accident. I had oh, no idea. It's so it stupid. It's so bad. <laughs> oh, I never watched it, but I, I guess I won't. That three well, is horrible. horrible. No, 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 maybe, no. Maybe I'll go check it out. <laughs> There's there. You guys saw um kids from that Gundam. I forgot the name of the Gundam right now, but yeah, Gundam was alright looking like the thing. But oh god, the movie it's just so dude. The cockpits look like Star Wars cockpits, like with just lights and shit everywhere. Yeah, I'm really. like, but that's not what it's supposed to look like. They're like they're like oh we're, look we're, a grenade. Where's the camera? Like, <laughs> like, like 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 you know a, a Muro race cockpit it's in like, the seventies look it, fucking. It's a brush, but now it's a, a lever that you use on your jet fighter. <laughs> oh my god, bro! G Gun Magic Sa G Gundam Magic Savior, movies. Gundam Savior is the name of the movie. Oh, Gundam, Gundam Savior is that what it's called? Yep, yep. G Savior. I, I, I think, think I knew that. Yeah, of course you did. Two thousand. It came out in two thousand, dude. It G came Savior. out in two thousand. Yes. G Savior, wow. a Canadian live action television film set in the Universal Century timeline. Well, line. there you go. I mean, <laughs> it's canon. It's it, science fiction in Canada don't go wrong. Science fiction and com or, I'm sorry, Canada and comedy. Yes, mm. absolutely, hundred percent. Comedy <laughs> out of Canada is fantastic. Shout out to Chits Creek. Yeah, Chits Creek and um Letterkenny. Yeah. And um, you know, S C T V and all that. But I <sighs> yes, science fiction doesn't seem like it's got a home in Canada. Gee Savior. No, you gotta bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um, um. Oh Actually, God, I, I might be wrong. I hope I hope somebody says, "Dude, you gotta check out this Canadian science fiction thing because you're wrong." I'd be like, "Yeah, absolutely." The Expanse, the Expanse. Do you watch it? The Expanses. The Expanse. I, I watched the first season. I haven't. I, oh. I haven't gotten back oh, to it, Lord. but it, it it's fantastic. It's fucking yeah. amazing, dude. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I, I tell I love, everybody to watch it. I I love how the um, I love the attention to physics and it oh, to you know, detail on everything. Yeah. Yeah, to it's make not it as real pew, as possible. Pew pew laser kind of stuff. Like you remember Battlestar Galactica, the the TV series that yeah. came out, you know, uh, recently or not recently, but years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of thing where it wasn't like, um, jets and flames and all that stuff, and the ships even had like a way to rotate around, and they were working in space, and the guns were, you know, it wasn't laser guns; it was actual ammunition. And yeah, all that yeah. Stuff. It, it kind of brought a little bit of a realism. To that where before it was just lasers and robots <laughs> you know and i was like I, I was really drawn to that but when i saw the expanse uh, the first season i gotta go back and watch the entire thing but um that that kind of physics aspect of it where season five baby december so i'm just saying it was really is that the yeah. last season or is that oh no no well it's um was it seven books or nine books i'm I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank but um they're, they're trying to do hopefully they're gonna do all the books you know what i'm saying so mm. And the last yeah. book comes out, it either came out, came out this year or it's going to come out. So either way. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's nine books. Anyway. I, but yeah. I, I hope that the Gundam movie's like that. You know? Oh my God. I, Dude, I the, hope it has that. Uh, the, it's just, there's so much in, in the Universal Century timeline that you can draw from and make an amazing yeah. sci-fi just the, um, movie with fucking what, robots. What you, were, oh. what you were talking about from Origins. And, mm -hmm. and there was that that space battle, like the fleets yeah. actually going to work on each other. That was like, holy smokes! I mean, that's that's like running a marathon just watching that. Mm -hmm. And then when when uh, when Shar actually gets into Zako and he starts just destroying everything, like <laughs> axe kicking things, and like you know, um, there there's a certain terror to it too. Again, if you go back to like Alien, where there's that terror in space kind of thing, yeah, and then you're you're watching Origins and the people who are in the bridge of this giant naval battle cruiser that's out in space, and then a, a Zaku head <laughs> pops up, and then they got an axe that he just axed through the entire bridge of the spaceship, and it blows up, and you're just like, oh my god, that's terrifying, bro. Like Thunderbolt, they Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt the same did way, an yeah. amazing job, at not only the, showing that re, like you know, reality of um 
of battle, but also yeah. giving you the both sides view. So like you can't even tell yeah. like like you can like root for the Earth Federation or Zeon. Like they're both everybody's doing what they think is right. And yep. I, it was an amazing portrayal of that stuff, man. That's ex that's exactly what I'm. And it's funny too because I just got done. Dun, 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 dun. There it is. Mm. I have it. I have it up here. I just somewhere. I just got done building it. And I gotta I gotta put all the stickers and everything on it. But Food, I'm the, 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 the i the idea behind having multiple shields and and having like a fabric kind of gasket thing in the joints because there's so much debris mm -hmm. from the devastation that happened that. You need that to keep all those pieces out of the joints. It's just like the thought process yeah. that went into it. And when he's going through and tearing through the the, the bad guys, and um, you see that point of view from from the the Zaku cockpit from the pilot, Dude. where all of a sudden the Thunderbolt head pops up and he's just screaming like ah because he knows he's about to die. And then the guy's just like, oh, it's just it's intense. It is, and that's a card, it's an animated, and it's anim it's animated dude. exactly. Oh my god, it's so I mean, good. Don't get me wrong, there's, there's some Gundam stuff out there that's like, what? <laughs> well, I, I know. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> the, you remember in Wing, um, the main character in Wing, when he was very, like, great. He was like, I'm, I'm going to kill you all. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> he's always walking monotone. When he was yeah. shooting, the, dude, in the movie, Endless Walls, when he's shooting down, and mm -hmm. and the, the girl's still down there, too, with, like, everybody, he's like, fuck it. Ah. <laughs> anyway, but... Yeah, but Thunderbolt it's, is it's, is amazing. It's there's a different different level. It's not it's not like um like I don't know what you, what you call it like when there's people that are just delivering lines, you know, they're just okay, I got to read this line and mm -hmm. and then you get those actors that are like can read the same thing but just you're like, "Oh my god." It's it's kind of like that. They like, transport you see you cartoons. Somewhere. Yeah. Like you see the original um Transformers cartoon and the original Transformers cartoon film. Yeah. That that movie for me is like a it's like a warm blanket. Like I start watching it and I get relaxed. Like, <laughs> bro, bro that's I love so it so funny. much. But it had that animation to it that like was really mm -hmm. beautiful at the time, and uh, and it all came from that kind of stuff back in the day. But what's crazy, and I don't I don't know if this holds any water, but uh, mm -hmm. did you ever read Starship Troopers? Did I? Ever... Not the movie, the book. No, no, never. I didn't. Was right. there a book so, before the film? Check check out the book. The book came out in like the nineteen fifties. And oh shit! They were, cap, wow. they were cap troopers, and there were mobile suits. There were mobile armor, um, or what do they call them? The mobile infantry is what they actually called them. And did you ever see Gundam Seed? Um, a little bit. A little it's bit. it's very similar to the original Moral Ray stuff, but at one point at the beginning of it, they show the when they're dropping the suits. Mm -hmm. They're they're in a drop ship, and then they're they're like going down, kind of like in uh, Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise film, yeah, where they yeah. bring them out and they drop them off the thing. That was in the book in the 1950s. That was Starship Troopers, and they just they talk about the suit and how it had like uh, snoopers, and then you, you do this, and it comes down. And you can see infrared, and you're in this suit, and they got to like bolt you into it, and you got like rockets and all those other things. And they explain it in the book, and none of it's in the movie, of course. I, <laughs> Absolutely none of it's in the movie. But they they're mechanized infantry, and they drop from a, a you know drop ship that drops them in a ball that. You know, it has multi levels that break off as it's going through the atmosphere and then it parachutes and they basically land and they get boost and jump. They don't fly, they just boost mm -hmm. and jump kind of thing. And um and it's crazy because it's like this is like the nineteen fifties. This, this is yeah, this is the nineteen fifties. But yeah, I, I went and read the book because I actually liked the movie when it came out. And then I read the book and I was like, wow, that movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but um the book is just so uh the way they talk about the suits and everything like that, you're like Man, the guy who made Gundam had to have read this book. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that he ripped them off or anything like that, but it had to influence in some way. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Iron Man, like Iron Man with his suit and his repulsors and all that. Kind of, they had to have read that book too, because it was 1950s. You know what I mean? And he's he's doing science fiction stuff that that now like Machine Krieger and Gundam and all that kind of stuff seems like it was. Well, um, a little flavor yeah, from that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's but you got to check it out. I mean, the author himself. I don't think I've really mentioned anything else from him, but um, but the book is really good, and it's a trip too because it's the nineteen fifties when it, when the book was written. Of course, it's mm -hmm. for the future and it's space and all that stuff. But the protagonist, um, Johnny Rico, is actually Filipino and Brazilian. 
So you find <laughs> out in, in the book later on that his mom was from the Philippines and his pop was from Brazil and he lived in Brazil. So it wasn't like Johnny Atlas, American hero yeah. <laughs> kind of bullshit from the 1950s. This was actually like a, you know, everybody in, in the book was, it wasn't just a bunch of white dudes that were big muscular mm-hmm. guys like that you do an action figure off of. So it was pretty cool. Um, and I, and I read it and I got the audio book too. That's how crazy I got with it. But, wow. Okay. But yeah, the actual suits, the actual suits that they talk about and the way that the suits move and there's, I mean, it's not, it's not as big as a Gundam, but it's um, big and bulky, almost like War Machine was in the last movie, but it's pretty cool. Oh, so so they were, they were because... too big. They were just, you know, modest in size. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, imagine if it was like, um, <clears throat> Like a whole buster kind like, of size? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, where it, it, it's more of a, it's not like a head. It's more like a dome, and then it's a little bit bulkier. So yeah, kind of like the like power bulkier. loader from Aliens, but like just fully covered. Yeah, yeah, fully some, covered okay, with okay. some weapons. And they, they explain the weapons and how they ratchet back onto the back and like, you know, bomblets that they keep on a brain. Yeah, it's, it's really cool, man. It's okay. like, it's seriously, when you read it, you're going to be like, man, how do they, how do they come up with that movie? based off of this book because <laughs> they I didn't have know. cgi <laughs> you know they didn't have like you'd have to have people in these giant foam suits walking around um i love the movie yeah, though the the what, you know obviously what it stands for and you know the the mockery uh, satire on yeah, yeah. a bunch of stuff but i didn't know it had like like it was inspired by a damn book which apparently yeah yeah got nothing to do with it yeah and the book the book is i mean it's close there's still the arachnids but they look more like <laughs> uh human spider it doesn't look like a big bug like it did in the movies. Got it's, it, got it. They 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 describe it a little bit more like a centaur, but instead of a horse, it's a spider. Hmm. Um, but then there's other creatures, or other alien races as well. It's not just that one. There's another seri- or a species of smarter aliens, and so they did a TV series. It was a um, it was a cartoon, it was an animated TV series. They got like one or two seasons on it. It was it wasn't half bad. It was based on but... the book. But it was based on the movie more. It was wow. kind of they tried to mix the book stuff into it, and it really. Um, but they introduced that second species of, of aliens into it. Oh, okay. But, um, okay. It, it's neat because it really, when again, when you read it, you're gonna say, "Oh, okay, this is like the maybe the great 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 grandchild of the RX seven eighty two, which is the hmm. that's the name of the actual you know the first Gundam was the RX seven eighty dash two seventy eight dash two. That's Grandpa. Just like this little fuckers right here, you know. This, this, just... um... <clears throat> they were um, that big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this is just this is just one of those heads, but. Ugh. That guy. That's like the first one. You know? Um. Mm-hmm. That's old granddad. Gotta love Gundam so much. Right. Mira, Papi Chulo, I was gonna ask you. Have or... you built? Have you built any other things then? Yeah, you know, I showed one? you the swordfish. I showed you the swordfish. Uh-huh. Um, this is that's a stormtrooper model kit. Oh shit! So that's that's an actual Bandai model kit, stormtrooper. And then um, don't you guys know, have um, Transformers model like, kits as well? You're gonna like this one, but just so you know, I painted this too. You painted it. So, Let me see. Right. Ooh, damn, that's one dirty ass Goku. <laughs> Put this is a model kit. Really... That's. <laughs> Damn, that's like right there with the damn uh, fig warts. Like, yeah. if you yeah, if like just look at it, that's yeah. Pff. I try to make them look like post battle, you know, yeah, 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 sloppy mouth, but... fighting gear and all fucking yeah. dirty and yeah. shit. Like they the should look. Instinct. That's sick. Yeah, I tried to I tried to do the ultra instinct to make it look like actual metallics, but but yeah, this is a model kit. Wow. No, yeah, dude. So I did a funny enough, and I still have it. It's in my son's bedroom. I did a, a Goku model kit. I mean, again, this is from what two thousand and two, two thousand and three. So it's an old ass model kit. The the clothes are rubber, so like you mean you can oh, okay, cool. in there. Um, and then I did um the uh, Master Chief. And to be honest, I think that's the only two things that I've built model kit wise that is not a Gundam. Oh. So wow. I've never really built anything else. Wait, didn't you do a Millennium Falcon, or was that the? No, no, was that I, the... I, that's it's a that's a Hasbro toy, actually. It is oh, okay, okay. You just you just did the actual detailing yeah. in there and the weathering yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Oh, cool, okay. Because it was just I remember great you, plastic. I remember doing that a couple years ago. Yeah, I have it right here. It's delicious. I still love it. <laughs> Fuck, I would, ah, and, I, and and I gotta. I'm working on the. On oh, the X-Men. nice, so... nice man! That thing's gigantic. 
Yeah, dude, and and I love the proportions because it's pretty much you know in fucking scale, if you will, with itself. It's not like like the toy sometimes. Yeah, time. and that's the that's the hardest part that I've had trying with with Gundam kits in particular because you can go through and panel line it, you know, with the marker mm-hmm. and just making the lines bolder. But when I decided to start painting stuff, I really kind of made a mess mm. at first because I did like a, a I did a Millennium Falcon with the smaller one, um, and I just made it way too dirty. Which came out really, yeah, it came out pretty dirty, and even, um, even oh, this X wing right here. I think this is the first X wing that I did, and it's falling apart and everything. But you, you can see, like, it's really super dirty. It's a little yeah, bit too yeah. dirty, you know what I mean? But it, it, that thing we were talking about earlier about scale, uh, weathering and scale. There's books out about it. Some really great books. Um, it's a little tedious nice. at times, dude. Weathering at scale? Yeah. Oh, shit. There's uh, in combat, this is uh, MIG. This is a guy out of Spain who's got his own line of paints and everything like that. But he, wow. um, he's he's literally showing you how to weather it. But it, it's done in a scale that makes sense. Like if you, you know, if you were taking a picture. Yeah, it looks you know, perfect. You, yeah, it, 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 it's not Ooh, big pat giant labor. Chunks, like, mm. pat labor. I remember people used to take like a. You remember those? Um, you remember those tools that you would heat up and you would like draw on wood with? Yeah. It was yeah. like a wax tool, almost like a heat tool or whatever. I've seen people that used to take figures and stuff back in the day, and they would melt the ho- giant yep. holes. And it, it's like, it's like, all right, so the bullet that he got shot with is like the size of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking massive. <laughs> in scale, yeah, yeah. So you've got the, you figure that the guy that's sitting in there would be like. You know, if, if I had a one six scale dude right here with me, that would be about the size of the pilot and you mm-hmm. know, in relative in relation to the, the Gundam suit. So imagine a bullet like that big. <laughs> like a whole I mean, that, that's big. So yeah. The actual cannon fires like Volkswagens, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty That's ridiculous. so funny. I try I tried doing that to uh one of my model kits. I had a but I, I had a very small wire. And I just hit it up and then, you know, started just yeah, fucking poking the mode, thing. Yeah. So at least yeah. I had the decency to keep it into scale somewhat. Yeah, it, it's tough. It, I mean, it's cool that you actually kind of thought about that without actually thinking about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're just like, nah, that's too big, you know, but it, it's tough. Like, you get really dirty with something and you're like, oh, my God. That, <laughs> it looks like a human that jumped in the mud, not yeah, a no, giant man. robot that stepped in a puddle of mud, you know. So this Rick Dom right here, I was mm-hmm. practicing doing um, um, weathering and scratches, and I was trying. Wow. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but the lighting sucks. But like, I started, you know, doing those little scratches yeah. on the side and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time that I've like practiced, and I think I went overboard with the with the dirt or the the black. Nah, I, I don't think it's that bad. No, I don't think it's not um, bad at all. Fuck, it's dusty as shit. But 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 yeah, yeah, like I was I was, I was trying to weathering. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was playing around like trying to get no, the. That's cool. Yeah. So it's that's not good. too yeah, much. But that's too... but that's good. Yeah, exactly. It's not too much, and you did the edge of it as opposed to like getting deep into mm-hmm. it. Because, yeah. Yeah, for those over here, that's what's up. Anyway, but yeah, dude, I I enjoyed. I like I said, it's therapy. That's really cool, me. man. It's fucking therapy. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, listen before... but yeah it's 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 and at least you know I, we're not saying that you need to do it right we're not saying mm. Pete and i aren't saying like this is how you do it it's just to it, do it it doesn't matter what it turns out like as long as you have fun building exactly. as long as you have fun you, if you don't want to put the stickers on don't put the stickers on you know, it's you like everything else play with it just have fun just do that just have fun yeah. Mira, i was gonna ask you have you ever seen a startis the it's yes. a uh, okay they're fucking yes. amazing right they, yes. This guy did such a. I don't even know anything about Warhammer, I, but this shit was either. just fucking ridiculous. And, and, and I, I'll be honest with you, that's probably some of the reason that I actually got some of the Space Marines because I was buying those Nighthawk guys, the ghost looking dudes. Yeah. And I saw uh, Star Days and I was like, God damn. Like, why? <laughs> I don't know why Games Workshop <laughs> doesn't just hire that dude. Like, like all right, you're a full time employee. Right? Here's your studio. Do whatever you want. We're going to need these many commercials. Here's your production schedule. Here's your budget. Go, go do it. Just, go. just make, just make me more content. I want to see the story behind all this shit. I, I yep. can't wait. 
Pero, anyway, Papi Chulo, yeah. listen, I'm gonna let you go. It's been like two hours, I think. <laughs> Is it really? I think so. <laughs> yep, yep, you're actually right. And, yeah. um... I appreciate your time, dude. Thank you so much for being hey, thanks, here. Man. No, it was cool. It's, I mean, I haven't talked to you since Comic Con three years ago, so, so it's cool. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. And so, this, is, this is cool too because I don't feel like I gotta look into the camera and talk like a robot. Mm-hmm. I am a nice. robot. It's, it's, it's not a. It's, it's very, very open. It's not like a. Well, first of all, what it's... did you do here? Second of all. How did you do this? And so you work at Bandai. Tell me exactly what's going on over there. And, let me uh, explain the multiple steps of injection molding. First, you... <laughs> 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 I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, Bobby. Yeah, Thank you, dude. I'll have you up. So I'm and, sure uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have you back. Cause... Well, I don't know. They're going to see this, and they're going to be like, well, I got to go hire P2 because he says he's not working. He did an amazing interview with an amazing... Um... <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to... Load this up, and I'm gonna see a post on LinkedIn that you got fired from fucking bad time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be like, "Hey, we didn't tell you you can talk to that guy. Who is that guy? That's Who is he?" Oh wait, he's got some Dragon Ball figures. He's okay. He's good. He's good. I, 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 yeah, I got a lot of Bandai he's, shit over here. So you're drinking a Kool Aid. You're good. Hey, hey, it yeah. it, 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 and and I'm not saying it's just because I'm an employee of the company, but you know, it, engineering wise and and quality wise, it's it's up there, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely out there. You don't have to I, tell I me. A, I, I never bought a Pirates of the Caribbean figure until I bought Jack Sparrow from Figure Arts, and it's dude the Figuarts, the fucking Figuarts Zero statues, the goddamn Grandistas and the the sheep statues, if you will. They're, they're fucking amazing, dude. They're like twenty five bucks, and they're. I mean, I'm like I'm pointing over here at, at my boy over here, which I have on the oh, one yeah. of the pictures. Yeah. But like, this looks amazing. Like it's it's twenty five bucks. It just whoop and ta da! You yeah. got a fucking delicious Vegeta. So, yeah, you don't have to tell delicious. me. Delicious, delicious, <laughs> man, delicious. But anyway, Papi, I'm gonna let you go, Papi. We gotta all hang right. out with our fans. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. I hope the so you guys. I will blame. You know, I will blame all this on you when my wife asks me why I've been in the room for two hours. Tell Tracy to you know hello and not hate me. I will. <laughs> I will. All right, Papi, take care. All right, man. Take care, Bye-bye. brother. Bye.